The Ghost Forest. Home of the Ghost Elves. Is as you remember it. Here you have come after departing the Pyramid of the Viridian Flame to warn the Ghost Elves of House Mordath's plans to attack and take possession of an Eye of Kalax that's rumored to be here. You made your way rapidly across the Kashigarine Desert and have been welcomed into the land of dead trees and their arboreal platforms. After explaining the situation to Vandar Quen, an ancient gnarled elf who is the closest thing this place has to a leader. The entirety of the ghost elf settlement flies into an uproar and they begin immediate and massive preparations for the Mordath onslaught. Vandar Quen is, of course, extremely thankful to you. You have saved us. With this, you will have my eternal gratitude. If there is something you require from me, you have but to ask for it. Make my sister safe. Namarsilie, the elven war leader, immediately goes about the business of rallying the ghost elves' defenders. And from the forest they come, a thousand spectral forms massing together beneath the trees. Bows as tall as their body, testing the pull on the sinew, making sure the arrow tips are thumb blood sharp. Constructing ballistas on the upper platforms to deal with the undoubted and highly original wyvern attack that House Mordath is so fond of launching. Avaleria works with the shamans of the elves to rouse the spirits of the forest itself. These, she says, will turn against Mordath from the very ground, the air that they breathe, the trees through which they walk. They will regret the day that they turned their greedy eyes on us. And she does the power thing that she's doing in the picture, probably more often than she should. <laughs> we and must of course, also prepare for uh, wyvern attacks. Now, Marcillier has that in hand, Valeria says. Are you guarding the uh, entrances to the dragon? Avalaya nods. Yes. I have given this some considerable thought. I have been arguing with Vandar Quen that the dragon should be loosed. If you loose that dragon, he will eat you all. Because it doesn't want anything better than to do that. You know this for sure. We spoke to it. Yes. <laughs> that you did. Don't forget, you bound it there. Besides, we needed to destroy the eyes. And don't forget, if you let House Mordath in there, they might re let it loose for you. I will speak to Namarsilie and have guards placed on the Wormsgrave dungeon. We met House Mordath in there, remember? They know of it. This you did. I thank you. 
These are wise words, Lady Bellis. She turns and hurries off to find an Amarcillier. I don't think he would kill them. He He's was a nice dragon. That he would. He asked us to set him free. No, he wanted to be killed. That yes, that's after we suggest. Yeah, yeah, we suggested that. Before that, but, he wanted to kill us all. Well, don't forget that nice dragons can be angry too, especially if you're chained up for so long. He specifically said he wanted to kill the elves yes. that bound him there. With with the with um him asking, you know, if we have anything to ask, do you think now's the time to ask for the for the other eye? Mm -hmm. It's probably the right time because then yes. at least we can if something goes wrong here we can run away with the eye. <clears throat> There's do we have enough holy water to contain it? Is the box big enough to contain two? <laughs> I, 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 I prepared in our in our week of absence uh, some holy water. Uh, did I? Could I have? Uh, that's quite an extensive procedure, holy water. Uh, does it uh, take uh, more than a week? It requires an altar dedicated to your god. Ah, which I don't have access to. No, you left that behind in Fort Valandor. Yes. <laughs> Do okay, so the elves have something of that kind? I, for I their have, own gods? I have one bottle of uh, holy water left. I have do. one. Yeah. I don't have any left. Yeah, I used mine. <sighs> Fighting the so you, demon. I, yeah, You've I got one. threw it at someone. Uh, and Chanta has one, I believe. Right. Mm. Okay. That should be enough, right? So you are you going to ask Van Quen about the eye? Mm -hmm. uh, can why? we ask one of the why? other priests for holy water, maybe? Why do you believe we have an eye of Kalax? Well, we know you have an eye of Kalax. Mm. And I think that it would be wise for you to, to help us find it and tell us where it is so then we can destroy it to prevent Mordath from getting more and more power. Because even if we win today, they're just going to keep coming back and unless we don't have what they want anymore. Why do you think Mordath are coming here? Exactly. For a picnic? Had you didn't, did, if you had not uh, have the eye, then they would not have come. Their leader is controlled by one of the demons. Or the demon. It's true. <sighs> and you say it. that Vorum Cathriax destroyed one of the eyes for you, eh? Yeah, he's Indeed. my friend. <laughs> we promised, <laughs> we, we made a deal with the dragon. <sighs> Which we still need to keep. Well, Somehow. that's something we need to talk to you about as well. Yeah. Since you are the ones that actually <clears throat> put the dragon into its uh, state of undeath, we would like some advice on how to undo this undeath. So, uh, so that it can die. But if it dies, how will you destroy future eyes? Well, it will die after it's destroyed the eyes. This is the deal we made. You made a deal with it to destroy multiple eyes, did you? Well, any eyes we could get our hands on. To be honest, at the time, we didn't know there were more than one. Mm -hmm. No. If so only we, we were told early. So your deal might only have covered the eye that you already have destroyed. No. Great. Because at that time, when we sat in front of him, we knew there were multiple eyes. It was new information to us, but we knew there were multiple ones. Well, I hope the dragon sees it that way. Mm. Should be asking. Well, look. I can ask him. <clears throat> I'm sure it's willing to oblige if we are willing, if we are capable of giving him what it wants. Oh. I can tell you how to do that. Absolutely. What we gave, we can take away. That's what I thought, yeah. Mm. 
my, my reckoning, then you have several eyes still to recover, hmm? Yes. The one you possess. Hmm. The one Mordath possesses. The one in the crown. Oh, you know of that one too. Yeah. And the one that went uh, far east, apparently. Ah. Uh, to Gal Hanoi. Yes. Have you spoken to your sister since returning here, Jedadian? I haven't, no. Perhaps you should. Let me guess, my mother has one. Perhaps you should speak to her. It would not be for me to reveal family secrets. Eh? I may, it might, if it means that we might die. <laughs> yes, I suppose. Then again, death comes for us all. It does, after a fashion. I will send for her. We will see what she has to share with you. He lowers his head, and there is the whisper of a message spell. Summoned Aliante. is with you shortly thereafter. Her two colored eyes full of emotion. Jadarian! And she runs over and just throws her arms around you. Not embrace her. You live! We have heard terrible rumors. Falandor has fallen. The, the northern provinces are in open revolts. Damarash itself is under siege. I take it we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Who is it under siege by? Three of the northern houses are attempting to seize the crown from House Damarath. When we heard of Valandor falling, we... Well, I, I feared the worst. It barely made it out alive. But it was not the northern houses that attacked us. It was House Mordath. And now they say they are here. coming here. <laughs> she turns, grips you by uh, your arms. Brother. I, I have it now. You have the what? Mayaladin's Causeway. The Rainbow Road, the way to follow her. I see how. I, I, oh, I told you last time you were here. It is all I have bent my mind to, my efforts, my studies. I have mastered Maladin's causeway. There is no place upon this world that now I cannot venture to. And only one I wish to find. How many people can it carry? <clears throat> there is no limit. As many as a road. That is useful. Hmm. I'm guessing it's like a teleport. Would my character know what that she's on about? King Mayaladin was an ancient elven king who discovered something called the Rainbow Road, which allowed the elves to spread themselves far and wide across Eroth and worlds beyond. Nice. It's more like a gate. Hmm. 
What do we do? Do we stay here and defend? Or do we go after Bro the other eye? Brother, you must come. You know she who took one. I've worked it out. That's why he called for you. <sighs> she went to Galanoi with it. She was convinced she could dispose of it there. Brother, that was 10 years ago. She hasn't returned. Will you come with me? I looked to the others. Do you intend on leaving before or after the Morlath troops arrived? Uh, I do not wish to stay and see my life ended on the tip of a Mordath blade when the Rainbow Road waits for me to find her. Okay. When you do find her, it might be wise to maybe have some guards. Um, the, the eye is really powerful and it can talk you into doing all sorts of things. If she spent 10 years with it, she's probably a, does she, she probably won't want to get rid of it and she probably has used it and maybe has some power and if you try and take it she might not be very happy mm, she's, she's my she's my mother our minds are quite strong that and she's in the elven realm is that correct Someone Daliante looks toward Van Darkwen. Galanoi is where the elves were born. So. Also, there's no telling whether or not she actually spoke to the eye or used it to peer into. She I may think... just have kept it in its in its container or what have you. I advised her not to. And I gave her what I <sighs> I gave her what I have used to keep the eye's influence from reaching my mind. What did you use? A dimensional flat box. Ah, clever. Clever. I don't suppose you have any more of them, do you? <laughs> There is the one I gave to Camanthalia and the one I kept for myself. You know we're going to need the eye. I do not think it wise to take one with you. If you leave it here, there is the risk that it falls into the hands of Mordath. Or we could do a quick trip to the dragon, the dragon. with exactly. two get them both destroyed um, and give them give him a nice update that we now have a way that we know how to to, to, to kill him. No, oh, we haven't been given that update yet. But we know it's a thing. We know it can be done. We just don't know how. How about uh, this proposal? But it looks pointedly at the Elven Lord. It seems a wise suggestion to me. Very well. And he seems to reach just into space itself. The end of his hand disappears from view and comes back through some small dimensional pocket that ripples like water, holding a long, shallow, narrow box of dark red wood. Which he hands over to you, Bellis. Mm. 
Chant Do not open it. I will not. Chant keeps putting her hands out, almost like, "Do you want? Shall I carry it with?" Them? I think we maybe we should uh, spread them out. Yes, keep them not separate. have not 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 have them all on one person because if one person falls, then well, we've only well that's the only oh. one we've got right now, isn't it? Hmm. That's the only one we've got right now. The one he's just given us. No, the one from the pyramid, and then it's in my old box. Oh, cool. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> How do we give the ghost mother's blessing and compliments to the dragon? If we're going to go to the dragon now, we need a proposal on how to kill him. Yes. He's going to want to know that before he even looks at us again. The circle. Mm -hmm. The circle in which it is held. It, it holds the answer? What? It needs to be dispelled. Okay. If it is if it is broken, the dragon will be freed. Yes. But if it is dispelled, its enchantment will die, and Vorm Cathriax will die with it. Mm. Okay. And do we have such a spell? Do we have? You something? have the ability to dispel the magics of other sorcerers. Yeah. Mm. By a scroll, maybe. Yes. But then also, yes. it needs to be very strong, I'm sure. There must be somewhere we can obtain this power. Or someone who knows I look, it. I look pointedly at the Elven Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I indeed have such an inscription which I am willing to render to you, scribed by my hands. Um, but... Journeyman... Sorcerers such as yourselves run the risk of fumbling the incantation. Yes. Yes. But that is how it would be done. I, uh, I, I show Mr. Squee Pinchy and it's like next to my, like, I think I got my fine familiar from them. So I'm just like, I can do it. No, that's, uh... <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> Do you know maybe of um, a more foolproof way of doing this? Like uh, an item which will allow the magic to be cancelled? Not within our possession. I have heard tell of such things. Rods and staves and the like made by the wizard kings of old. Mm -hmm. uh, the red wizards of Tirataros had such at their disposal. Not we. No. Oh, the, the magic um, of song and breath. Yes? What, what is the, uh, the success chance for a scroll win for our level? Uh, it's the, there's a, a, a failure chance equal to 5% times the difference in levels between what you are and what you need to be to cast a spell. So that's about about 99% at the moment. No, you need to cast a spell magic, you need to be uh, fifth level. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at like five or 10%. But I'm oh. sure that the, the person who actually uh, put that that spell, which is on the dragon, is <laughs> of a significantly higher experience. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, it is a very, very big if if we would cast a, a scroll spell on that. What if he came with us though? Like, could we get him to? Is he the one who cast it? Maybe. I could. Would you be cast. able to do it if you're worried that you don't think we can handle it? If well, it went wrong and Vorum Cathriax were released. Exactly. We want to make sure that we we do it with a certain amount of uh, surety. There's other ways we can figure this out. We don't have to do it now anyway, because we no need exactly. To this first. this is something that this is for a future concern. Yes, but more know. importantly, we also need to make sure that if you don't survive, no offense, we have an alternate we have source. Al alternate, uh, yeah, but we will. Yeah. We will have an alter alternative. Uh, Maybe so, if you uh, do have a scroll, we'll take one now. Avalaria has this ability as well, but 
Oh, wait. He shuffles over to the back, the rear wooden wall of his um, treehouse. <laughs> and uh, of his bookshelf, he grabs a bone tube. I'll nod, I'll nod to Hagen, get the rest. The <laughs> 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 good year flamp look. <laughs> Thank you. We better be on our way and get this uh, done. Yeah, there's no time to waste. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of right, so are, are you going to go speak to Voron Cathrax, or are you going to... Yes. Um, yeah, yes. Yeah, we right. yeah. And we, we should have a map of the place where he is being held, so we should be able yeah, to... We, we know how to get another. there, you remember from last time, right? Right, but also the internal map, I mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So how, you know, which corridors to avoid and sure. where the traps were and stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's not currently uploaded onto um, Roll20, but, uh, but I believe you. Helps. Well, I do. Yay. Well, that's really <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, just give me a second. Um, and then when we return, we go to Galhanoi, yeah? Galhanoi? Galhanoi. Okay. Chance so is then... really excited, by the way. <laughs> She's going to see her special friend. Yeah, me too, oh. also. Gonna eat you. I'm gonna I'm woo that, that dragon. I'm I wonder if he's read time. my letters. <laughs> I think okay. I, I would. I would caution all of you to try and restrain yourselves a little bit. Restraint. I don't know the word. Uh, exactly. <laughs> right. That's why I'm imagine. telling you. It That's why I'm telling you now. I'm front loading you. Restraint uh -huh. is to like right. hold back and um, <laughs> doing the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Avil's not even he really listening. He's tuning his banjo lately. He's like, yeah. <laughs> why would he say he doesn't know it if he knows it? It's a figure of speech. <clears throat> All right, don't don't hurt yourself. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Um, would you by chance have some more holy water for us? Holy water. Yes. Yeah. There are no priests here. Mm. Our gods vanished on the night with no stars, and we are an old people and have not made peace with the new gods. Hmm. Do you maybe have some left from the olden days? <laughs> I don't think it goes off or anything. Rick. Even the holy <laughs> water <laughs> cannot survive a thousand years and the night of no stars. The a thousand years, yes. How long do you, pe you think elves live, Shanta? I thought a hundred if they ate really well and exercised. <laughs> I'm, near, I'm nearly 300 years old. And he's a young one. And I'm young. Hmm. Do, you need, do, you, do you ever need help walking? Because I can help. But I, I know I'm not very strong, but I can help, help help you carry stuff if you want. And she's like fumbling, trying to like help you carry whatever, even your bow. She's like, I can, I can help you. <laughs> I look to like necessary. Aldrick, is, is, she, is she okay? Yeah. They're, not even a little bit. You're asking, <laughs> <Aldrich>. <laughs> me, man. Back at, the circle, ever okay. back at the circle, there was someone who um, they 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 kind of lost their vision over time. You can get you can get a thing with these lenses that make you see better. It can, it can help you with your your shots. Uh -huh, but else don't need that. Have I been missing my shots? That is. Oh, that is a good question. Have you? Have you been missing? <laughs> hmm. Let me recall. Be, be careful what you're insinuating, you both of you, <laughs> elf and archer. Oh, well, hey, Hagen, how, how old are you? Because you did drop your bow. Maybe maybe they would help that. Or the, okay, uh, okay, Shanta, and Shanta, this Shanta, conversation Shanta. is over. Yes. Think of it in terms of 
dogs and humans. Dogs live what ten years? We're like we're like we're like short candle stumps compared to elves. We yeah, we're, we're like we're like we, compared to them. To elves, we're like dogs. I like dogs. Wow. Yeah, elves like Thank humans you, too. Patrick. How long do Tieflings live? And look at Hagen. Sometimes they like humans a little bit too much. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I would ever do that with my dog. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on now. Um... <laughs> hey, you went there, man. <laughs> uh, no shame, you know me. <laughs> Chanta tries to think if um, if Aldrich is an elf or not. <laughs> okay, the Worm's Grave Dungeon. Through the dead trees, in through its ruined exterior, past scenes of battles, secret doors, broken statues, and into the presence of Vora Macathriax. What, Gav? Once more, you come. Hiya. <sighs> Shanta. How have you been? Waiting. Mm -hmm. Well, we've done some research and we found a way um, that we can um, relieve you of, of this life. Um, but we've also found out that there's more eyes and we need your help again. Yes. There were six. Do you think you'd be okay to, 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 to hang on until we've, we've got rid of all of them? Um, <sighs> But your bargain was for one. I know the, the the problem is is the way that we would um we would we would help is um I need to be a lot higher of a level to to be able to do it um and Bellis also isn't high enough of a level so not level <laughs> level experience. Experience. Level of what? <laughs> to be more experienced. I need to be more On a scale of one to twenty, if I were. <laughs> we, we need to go to the next stage, like the next area. See, so where we, a, can, see, we can't go to yet. In terms of a one to twenty, level. I'm a level four. You'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, I'm, I'm you need not... to transcend from lesser journeyman magic to greater journeyman magic. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, I need to um, learn that magic further, so I can't perform it right now. But the thing is, is if we don't destroy these eyes, we we'll might never die. Be able to perform it. Precisely. The dragon's eyes flare green. The illumination washes up over all of you, and you can actually feel it, as if a cold wind had blown across the chamber. No dust moves. Your clothes don't swear. Your hair doesn't waft in a picturesque fashion, but nevertheless, goosebumps rise across your skin. You see your breath frost in the air. I, too, have discovered something. What's that? I'm glad. <laughs> Words came to me from the outer world of Valandor Fallen and Letters of Friendship. I'm glad you got them. <laughs> I no longer desire 
death. Well, I'm glad you've changed your mind. Um, <laughs> we can hang out for longer then. <laughs> I desire my freedom. I'm sure we could do that as well. We would just have to figure out some kind of arrangement. I know, Chanta. Okay, Chanta. Mm, I would look upon the walls of my birthplace once more. Where is that? Valand. Ah, yes, of course. I mean, if if we did, if we, she kind of like whispers to Aldrich, if, if if all of Mordath are at Fort Valandor and we get let him go, maybe he can just take care of everything for us. And what of the elves? Exactly. Who sent you letters, Lord Dragon? Shh. Um, da. I find the rapport between you two somewhat disconcerting. What did you say and do, Shanta, that you haven't told us? I just sent him a letter saying that I I know how he feels and that it's lonely and if he wanted a friend or anything that I'm here and I know that death may seem like a solution or at least a less lonely one, but it doesn't have to be the end, and that he could still have a life, but not in a mean way, in like a, in a good way, like a friend life. She told me I could change my mind. Mm -hmm. It was the truth. She promised to show me how wonderful life could be. Promised to save me from loneliness. She, am I close enough? Can I? Oh no, I can't pet him because the circle. She'll kind of extend almost to go to pet him. Aldrich, and Aldrich pushes her hand down. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's like it's it. like... so that's it then. <laughs> the true end to your curse was the friends you made along the way. Pardon me if I'm <laughs> skeptical of that. Well, that's not actually the end to his curse. We've, we've got to help him with that. <sighs> yes, I am aware. Okay. What have you done, Shanta? I, um, does he have, like, does he have the letter? Like, is it around him? Can I, like, grab it, if, if anything? Or? It's nowhere to be seen. Okay. Um, I, I, I didn't really write myself a copy. Um, uh, I, I just said that, I mean... I've changed. I don't I don't I don't follow a demon anymore. And I can recite it from memory. Please if don't you wish. You're really smart. <laughs> Gets embarrassed. <laughs> I think it's not. Uh Bellis uh, looks expectantly at the dragon. Yeah, Mr. Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I know we just met, but I would like to say I understand. Obviously, not to the extent of when you're always like to be alone <clears throat> for the last of your try. <laughs> you swore we would kill you as you wanted, and you contained the mind. We can show you how great life can be. I can't lose hope. I was just imagining right now the dragons. <laughs> the dragons got it in between his hands. No. He's, put, he's put on his reading like glasses. Yeah, he's got half moon spectacles, and he's like, "I know that your face." 
Hagen, Hagen takes his crossbow and points it toward himself for a moment. <laughs> and re reluctantly turns it back away. <laughs> oh my god. Looking off everything. But you can cuddle with the young man thank you if you like. You can be the bestest of friends. Oh, I'm sorry in advance. It's been just uh, well, your feelings. From Shanta, your new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, 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 she shakes her head. She has this <laughs> utterly incredulous look on her face. Like, looks back at Shanta, looks back at the dragon, and. <laughs> Abel has tears in his eyes. He's like, that was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Aldrich is just standing there shaking his head. <laughs> Aldrich, wasn't that amazing? I just. I'll never I'm... be able to write something like that. Chance is like blushing. Oh, you know, <laughs> Your reading was truly without parallel. <clears throat> I I think he can and I mean he's been that he's been here so long that the I, people I think that... I think Shanta you made your point eloquently <laughs> ever so eloquently and it's probably best that now we just revel in your beautiful message and you stop talking again what are the elves your hatred Although it was part of their thing, thinking about setting you three. What happens when you destroy an eye? Can you tell me, dear dragon? What happens? Its material form dissipates. And what happens to its spiritual form? It bleeds back across the plains to Alax. And what if you get a whiff of it while you're trying to burn it? I am beyond such petty temptations. And I believe it. You understand me asking, I'm sure. Cool. Of course. As for the elves, vengeance corrupts. Hope liberates. Given a choice, I would choose the latter. If it brought me to my home once more. Tell me, Dragon, if we released you and you went home, would you respect the lord of the house? Or would you be its lord? Who is that lord? That remains to be seen. Then, so does my reply. Let's just say I am hoping that I can be that lord. If you gave me my freedom, and a chance, to look upon the place of my birth again. I would pledge my fang and talon and breath to your banner. There's also the small matter of the spell you placed upon us. 
vowing us to destroy you. Seeing as you no longer wish that, perhaps you should lift the spell. What can be made can be unmade. So um, the part I am missing in this conversation is the solution for our eyes. This mm. has to be part of the deal. Because that's why we are here. Promise me my freedom. And I will destroy every last eye for you. Well, as it happens, we have two right here. Would you agree to destroy them now? I have made my offer to you. It is for you to accept or refuse. Will you leave these owls in peace? I think he's already said that. No, it's not what he said. He said something else. He was he not chose. very specific, and I, I would like... He would choose hope over vengeance, is what he yes. said, specifically. But that doesn't mean he, don't, he will leave the elves in peace. Uh, and hope is, of course, uh, to be explained in various different ways. If this is part of, part of your deal, if you want to make sure that the elves remain untouched, he, the dragon must say so. I swear it. I uh, say yes, Shanta. What? Um, how did you find out that Valendor had fallen? If I did, I only sent one letter, and I didn't say it. There is an elf who comes to speak to me, to bring me, and read to me the letters. Oh, that's really lovely. Does that happen to be the elf you are teaching the Rainbow Path? Mm. A moon white is as insightful as the legends hold. That's my sister. Half sister. <laughs> oh. She is really lovely. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> You're muted. Allow me a moment to confer with my companions outside. And I uh, bleed them out. Yeah. He doesn't need to eat, and he's really well behaved, and he can read. Can we keep him? Can we please? Shanta. Uh, a dragon is a I am pet. uneasy about. <laughs> it's a dragon. I am uneasy about trusting in the benevolence of a dragon, let alone, God's help me, the power of friendship. If you ask mm -hmm. me, this task was less complicated when we were to end his life. Do you truly believe we will not come to regret this? Do you actually believe he can be trusted to a fault? In my mind, the danger of having a dragon as a foe outweighs the benefit of him as an ally. I think Hagen, Hagen uh, <clears throat> voices my uh, concerns mm. <laughs> most eloquently. As, that as, dragon as, is magnificent. But on, but... The other, on the other hand, this is where we are at. And we only have one way that we know of to destroy these eyes. And since Chanta has, uh, without <clears throat> informing us, changed the situation totally, this is the deal that's on the table. And I have a feeling this is the only deal we're going to get from him. We must also remember that if we don't free him, 
and make a pact with him, then Mordaf will. Exactly. This is the other coin side, yeah. Besides, he is a Valandor dragon. Um, when uh. I arrived at Fort Valandor, um, if you guys weren't there, I would have been killed because of I'm a tiefling. And some people see see tieflings as as monsters, and some people see dragons as monsters. My, my I dear, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but you realize this dragon here yeah, came to this place and was bound by the elves because he came to kill the elves and the tieflings and anybody related to demons. You would have been dead by this dragon were you living at that time. True, but... So it's never black and white. No, but our, our goals have aligned to some degree. It's quest Valendor to destroy us. They, they had aligned, yeah, they had aligned before Chanta started sending the dragon love letters. I sent him one letter and it's because he seemed really sad. Yeah, but you changed things and you didn't you didn't confer with us. I didn't know I had to let you guys know every time I wrote a letter. Well you don't. Chanta. We're a team, aren't we? Well private correspondence is one thing, but Writing letters to a dragon. That's Secrets, one that had geased us. Secrets are to ha be had by many. And I looked at Bellis, maybe <laughs> more so than others. Ah, and then there's people who are trusted with secrets, and then there's the people that are not trusted with secrets. I, I think. All right, all right, all right. Okay, everything. We cannot change the past. All we can do is deal with what the issue is at hand and the cards that we've been dealt. What lives in the eyes are dangerous, and dragons are dangerous too. Be very careful, Chanta. Yes, men, men agreed. And we will go forward with caution, but we cannot undo this. So there's little point arguing about it. Hmm. Fair enough. I think I think Shanta knows that her but, actions were perhaps a bit rash. But I see potential in this. No, no, of course, the dragon knows exactly what to spin in front of your eyes to see potential. <laughs> Squee. <laughs> she gives him a cuddle. I'll look around <clears throat> after hearing that. Alternatively, we can go and seek out the eye in Galhanoi and have three eyes. No, not a good idea. I, I agree that our best course of action will be to take this deal. But I, I do think we have uh, quite a situation on our hands. Oh, yeah. 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 But I... Um... If, it's, if, your, it's your call, Aldrich. If we let him go now and he destroys the eyes, he can fly to Valandor and go on all Mordath, and then that's all our problem solved, and then that, in turn, would take their eye. And then he gets to see his birthplace. That's assuming he keeps his word. No, oh, Dragon keeps his word, but it's about how you understand what his word is. This is where exactly. the trick lies with dragons. Uh, they're as old and as ancient and as wise and it, as tricksy as this world. Oh, I have no doubt. Hmm. And I, I, I am heeding your counsel, Bellis. I just... What do you? What would you have me do? No, no, exactly. I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping for a moment of inspiration here from a <laughs> something which is at the moment is eluding me. But uh, this mm. is the deal we have on the table. Mark the 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 history of the dragons of Valandor. Is that known to me? Um, the history of the dragons of Valandor is the history of the of the dragons of Torlek. Um, House Torlek itself, back before the empire was an empire obtained two things, right? Number yeah. one, it obtained um, a magic crown. Yes. Um, said to predate humans that granted as wearer all sorts of powers. And Presumed second... The eye. Yes. Secondly, it gained the alliance or allegiance of a brood of dragons. Right. Right? So the dragons served Valandor because they or their forebears were from that brood that pledged their allegiance to the Empire. Right. Do we know why they did so? And did the Crown have anything to do with that? That you don't know. Um, Aldrig is not that well schooled. Uh, and Bellis, you're only recently 
What remember. about Avil? Avil, you were more schooled it. in all this stuff than I yeah. was. Okay, Avil, give me a percentage roll, please. Um, which dice? The two d tens. One is the tens. One is the units. Okay. Uh, seventy six. Okay, no, uh, Avil, you've heard. Yeah, it's something to do with a storm underneath the Damaresh. Damaresh is a, on a, a natural bridge over a canyon, and there's a storm that churns forever in the canyon beneath it. There is something about the dragons coming out of the storm, um, but you can't remember the details. Right. So why don't we ask the dragon? I'm sure that's a story what we'll I, be able to tell. But what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is the difference between Valandor dragons and, say, did, did the other houses have dragons? And what what made these dragons loyal to specific houses? Yeah. If they were well, generally generally well, across Torlek, you know? Should have spent more time reading and less time playing with your big hammer, shouldn't you? Yeah, well, it paid off. <laughs> I do not have a big hammer, and I have spent many years reading. Would I know anything about these dragons? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, Shanta... You don't have the uh, the imperial perspective, um, but you know that the original brood of dragons, there were three of them, and each of those three pledged itself to one of three great houses. In the south, Valandor was one of them. Right, Damarath was another, Torlek was another in the north. Um, and that dragon and its offspring then pledged to loyally serve that house. And this is what helped these three houses become the major power brokers they were in the uh, the boom years of the Empire. Right. I uh, relay that information to the others. Okay. Hmm. So let's hope that... Um, so let's just let's hope that these dragons were not bound to Torlek through the crown and the eye in the crown. Well, they went to three well, houses, not just the crown. No, but... I'm he seems quite eager to destroy the eyes, though. Well, if it's what... what if, if those eyes were... Controlling him. What controlling him, I understand that, but then when somebody actually finds out that you can use an eye to do that... I'm, this is... I'm speculating here. This, I'm, this is my... my Paranoid moon white self here, which is uh... no. I'd rather hear, hear the paranoid point of view than mm -hmm. uh, assume that everything's fine. You know, I'm, try I'm trying to figure out angles where this might go wrong, and, and this is one of the things that I'm worried about. Anyway, um, I, I can't think of any alternatives to to this. Uh, <sighs> then I see no other choice than accepting the, the the deal as the best option forward for us. Unless yes. Hagen, you have some insights. I only have a question. Does anyone know the consequences of breaking a deal with a dragon? He will lift that spell. If that's what you mean. Hmm. But does he intend to forge another deal with us? I'm sure. This is how a dragon makes you keep <laughs> whatever you promise, yeah. Sure. Hey, can we're not going to promise him freedom and then f not free him. The thing is, the, the part I'm concerned about is the part where he pledges loyalty to House Valandor or whether he decides to break that particular part of the I, promise I and just should. decide to rule it. I think we should renegotiate the moment of his freedom in as part yes. of this deal. I think okay. the, freedom should, the freedom should be given um, after we've had these eyes, eyes destroyed. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. We'll see what he says. I mean, the, the time span is nothing for a dragon that he has no, to No, especially what? an undead one, but yeah. what if he says no? Huh. Then he can rot down there. That, that's that's where you go then, yes. Then we will have to find another way with the eyes. I don't think there was, a, there was another. There was another way of doing it, wasn't there? What was the other... Uh, can, I, can I do some kind of intelligence check to see if there, I can recall the other way of destroying an eye? I remember there were two, two, va two ways of doing it. There was the the dragon's breath, and then there was one. There's some of them were like going to the plane of 
the, the layer of k -lac. Yeah, actually where they, I came from, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, is that it? So it's either Slay Kalax. Yeah. Slay Kalax. On its home plane. Something yeah. like that, right? It's, it's either Slay, K Slay Kalax or expose it to the unliving breath of Thor and Kali uh, Kathleen. Yeah. Yes. So we'd have yeah, to kill Kalax. Options, yeah, of those two options, I'd say this one's probably the more likely scenario. So, um, look again, I'm... I'm I, 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 this is, um, there's another option, of course, which um, is try to try and convince the dragon to make a different deal. I think him doing the eyes and then being freed is fair. I think he'll see that too. Okay. Um, just to put it out there, we also have the leverage of if he really wants to be free, and this is his ultimate goal, we do know how to ki to kill it. Hmm. Yes, but as, only as long as he's within the circle. Yes. The moment he's out of that circle, that, that yes. dispelling trick doesn't work anymore. No, I get that. Yeah. No. But then he's taking a risk as well, assuming that we are going to release him. This, this is the point, yeah. Yeah. We're all taking risks, but there you go. Okay. Um, right, let's uh, return I, to the dragon then. Okay. <clears throat> you have finished your discussions. Indeed. Mm -hmm. We will agree to release you on the condition that you do that. We do that after you've destroyed all six eyes. This, then, is the nature of our bond. I swear that the elves shall live in peace. I swear to pledge my flame and fang and talon to the banners of Valandor. I swear to destroy the eyes of Kalax. You swear to release me from this circle. So that you, you may return home. swear to aid me in my return home. As a scion of House Valandor, I swear it. I swear. As an advisor to Lord Eldrick, I swear. And I also swear. Because everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever misgivings they may have. If my lord swears, then I swear. Uh, you you elf are muted. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I've got a little goblin running around being a noisy bastard. <laughs> um, Jay Darren will just nod his head in agreement. I, Vordum Kathiax of the line of Avnectatrix, so swear. And you feel the bonds settle over you, a gentle pressure in the air that melts its way into your very spirits. And your oaths will hold you. Has the other one been lifted? What of the old oath? Our former oath. I cast it into the dirt. I break its chains. I unwrite its words from the book of my power. From it you are free. Good. <clears throat> I, uh... What's... 
I, I, I upend the open box in front of the circle and let the eye roll on the floor, not over the circle, of course. This is the one that's in the dimensional flat box? Yes. Okay. Straight away, hissing voices arise out of it, not held within holy water. Its, if, its influence is immediately unleashed. The dragon doesn't give it more than a moment. And a single blast <laughs> of fire streaks forward, incinerates the eye, and a high-pitched, terrified scream rises higher and higher and higher until it evaporates and is gone. I look at Chanta. The other one. That was really cool. Can you do it again? <laughs> Second die <clears throat> crawls out of its holy water onto the ground. Dragon looks at it, and there's just a satisfied smile as the third, fully half of the eyes of Kalax, is reduced to nothing <laughs> under a lightning like blast of his breath. I stand Again. well clear. <laughs> I had me yeah. panicked there, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> Get some mars marshmallows out on the stick. <laughs> Again, like the, demon, his the demon scream rises to ear splitting heights. And its echoes fade away throughout the depths of the Worm's Grave dungeon. That's what you get, you big bully. Yeah, you tell him, Shanta. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. So we have we to be on our way. We will Until the next time. Uh. May your oaths return you to me. Yes. Fare thee well, children of Valandor. Tally ho. I give him a curt bow and lead, lead them out. I'll, I'll, I'll write to you! Lord Dragon. The dragon's eyes flare brilliant green in a farewell as you leave it residing just a little longer in its circle. Three down, three to go. Well. <clears throat> oh. That's twice we've met a dragon and lived. Yeah, that's uh, something ominous about that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just wait until the sixth eye is destroyed and it turns out that it actually opens a portal. <laughs> <laughs> ah, free at last! Well, then that way our oath would be done. Yeah. So, back to the dead forest. Yeah. The defense preparations are at a fever pitch. The elves have the ballistas in place now on the upper tree platforms, and you can sense a live and churning breeze moving between the trees like a nest of invisible serpents have been summoned up from the ground. Avalieria promised that the Ghost elf shamans would rouse the spirits of the forest to full life, and it certainly feels as if they have done so. These invisible forms touch and prod and poke at you as you move your way back to the elven settlement, assessing and then deciding to let you continue in peace. Now, Marcillier has archers on all the upper platforms, infantry on the lower levels, and on the edges of the, uh, the dead forest, where, if you recall, the land rises to cliffs, you can see uh, her getting troops in position for flanking and pincer uh, maneuvers. And her preparations proceed at a good pace. Okay, we're going to find my sister. 
Summer Daliante finds you as you are looking for her. Brother, I heard such sounds from the Wormsgrave dungeon. You have destroyed another of the eyes. We have, yes. Two. Well, another two. Has. Thank you for keeping him company. And she'll kind of like bow a little bit. I was really worried about him getting lonely and it's really nice that you've offered him friendship and you read to him and look after him. Um, I, uh... <laughs> yes, let's keep that between us, if you don't mind. Of course, no worries, I won't tell anyone, she says quite loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <sighs> they have spotted Mordath troops on the approaches from Whitethorn. Brother, if we are to go, let's be now. Let it be soon. Has to be now. Make your preparations and uh, gear up. All right, if there's any last minute uh, whatever's you people need to do, then make it so now. I top up my arrows. Uh, just a squee from Pinchy, please. I'd like to. Perfect. Yeah, I'd top up my uh, my bolts and is yeah. there any way I could buy like a buckler? Yes. Okay. Is there any way that Arnout can buy me some magical arrows? No. <laughs> you are Eberron. <laughs> um, um, well, everybody's still busy getting things together. I try and find a moment to get the old man to tell me a little bit about the history of the dragon's attack and how Spellander's attack and their role in that and why they, in the end, decided to put the dragon in, in a state of undeath. Well, you've been in the Worm's Grave dungeon, haven't you? You've seen the inscriptions. Mm -hmm. We brought him down. We blunted their attack. Why did they attack you? They said it was because we had one of the eyes. It was during that whole crusade, their mad desperation to rid uh, the lands of demons, or so they said. But in truth, we were keeping them well, as safe as we could out of the hands of the tieflings to prevent the six being brought together. Hmm. Well, I mean, humans never see things in such simple terms. For them, everything has to be complicated and a conspiracy. So, mm. why didn't you destroy it like we did? The price the dragon asked was too high. What did the, what did the dragon ask? You'll forgive me if I keep some truths to myself. You realized we had to make a deal as well. Yes. I trusted you would. I tell you our deal, you tell me your deal. <laughs> Trade secrets with a moon white? Mm -hmm. you I did, don't think so. You did say that you, you would um, do it as, as we asked because we sa saved you. I'm, 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 uh, I wasn't aware Chanta was following me in this conversation. <laughs> I, I look surprised at Chanta on my shoulder. Chanta nods and then slinks back out. <laughs> Sudden Chanta. <laughs> Chanta appears. <laughs> she is sneakier than I give her credit. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> mm. Mm. Anyways. Mm. I saw on those drawings as well that um, you punished that dragon for this quite severely. You could have just ended it. You gave it an end endless torment instead. Why? Hmm. I often ask myself that. It would have been easier to kill it, 
safer, perhaps. Look, um, I was so very filled with vengeance, and we lost so very much that day. Vengeance, hope. I had this conversation not, not very long ago. Hmm. I see. And again, we're back to Chanta. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I bid you success in your coming battle. Namarie. Lord. Until we meet again. Uh, if you want it, I would offer you the blessings of my Lord. Or oh, usurper gods. <laughs> he turns and staff rattling on the floor goes back to uh, oversee his commanders and the defenses they're preparing for the dead forest. By the way, before I head out, can I do a bit of a look around and see how their preparations are going and see if I can spot any weaknesses and maybe give them some advice or not? Now, Marsilia seems to have it well in hand, but you're able to uh, provide it with some alternate troop formations for the uh, the flanking groups. Okay. Which she uh, thanks you for. This should certainly be of uh, some use to her going forward. Okay. Yeah, whatever I can do to help. Summon Daliente waits for you. Beneath one of the larger trees, her face in shadow from above, illuminated from below by a shifting polychromatic weave that she's building between her hands, making it larger with each pass and each stretch. It is indeed, as the name suggests, A rainbow. Seven bright colors and the hint of others that lie just beyond the edges of your perception. She kneels, the web now between her hands, and blows. And where her breath touches the light, it fans out in front of her. A shimmering polychromatic path that spills across the forest ground as if someone were shining a seven colored sun down upon the undergrowth. And onward it rushes. But you see, it's going no further into the forest than maybe a dozen yards, and yet still onward it rushes through intervening dimensions as if the forest were an irrelevance, as if the forest were merely sunlight gleaming on the surface of water and the rainbow path penetrates into the depths, a shimmering road far below. It seems to stretch for miles. You're Eyes struggle to take in the overlaid perception of the forest and yet this path going on and on and on and on beneath it and through it. And at the far end, suddenly you see sunlight, golden on green, awaiting you. Summon Deliante stands. It is ready. She turns to face Judari and there are tears pouring down her cheeks. Asmala, are you okay? I don't know. She holds out her hand. I'll take Brother, it. take my hand. She steps forward onto the rainbow path. <laughs> to the rest of you, Jaden and Samandaliante just vanish as if pulled at incredible speed down this pathway. 
I uh, follow, if possible. Yeah. Okay. I step in right behind Aldrich. <laughs> yep. Gotta hold hands. <laughs> Monta wanted to hold hands. hold hands with Aldrich, but he ran ahead. <laughs> so sad. John is going to stand there like... Oh. Hey. And then I think only me and Avil are left now, right? Hey, you hands. can hold my hand. I'll hold Avil's hand. Then That's we'll right. Together. Yeah. Let's skip down the way. Yeah. La, 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 la. <laughs> Let's follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> yes. One by one, you are pulled rapidly one after the other down the rainbow pathway and emerge to a land that is neither dead nor under imminent attack but sun-kissed skies and rolling green countryside strange titans of stone rising through the clouds and water spilling over hillsides Behind you, the shimmering rainbow road evaporates like a rainbow after the storm. Never did I believe my eyes would see this. Where are we? It is not just your eyes but your hearts feel it. Ancient memory locked in the stone beneath your feet. Half-heard whispers on the wind of forgotten elven tongues. Here, so legend has it, the elven race were born. There's no sign of it, no ruins. Just an ancient, empty, waiting land. Whatever happened here was long, long ago. And then you hear it and feel it, a tremor in the earth beneath you. A voice, a female voice, crying out in pain comes from the trees from the stones from the water from the air itself reaches a crescendo of agony and then dies away you're certain it's coming from beyond those stone pillars you can see did a recognized voice I hear the stream in the background. I don't know where from. So can I. Yeah, yeah, same here. When a chanter came out of the Rainbow Road, she's just going to look around and be like, it's really green. I don't know if she's ever seen grass before, to be honest. Well, the echoes of the strange scream die away. What was that unholy sound? Any idea? You've no idea. I think Not it was even a me. woman screaming in pain. Yes. I thought I what it sounded that. like. Was it like a, you young, a young woman or an older woman? or? It's difficult to tell. Was it a tiefling woman? Let's look mm -hmm. the name. Let's go and, and look. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll head off. Okay. So you head in the direction that the sound came from, skirting around the hill toward the stone pillars to see what lies beyond. Dum, dum, dum. And we'll uh, find ahead. out. We'll find out exactly what that is after the break. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will see you all in 10 minutes. So, following the sound of the scream, you head away from your point of arrival in Galhanoi. 
The landscape oh, wow. opens up around you. A rolling countryside of hills, vales, silver rivers, verdant slopes, interesting trees. The sound doesn't come again. But as you cross the green grass of the pasture, hearing the sound of the babbling brook up ahead, you also hear voices and see a pair of figures. At first you think they're children, but then from their pale hair and pale skin and dark pool-like eyes, you realize they're moon whites. A pair of them, oblivious to you, sitting fishing on the riverbank. One chattering in the white tongue to the other. You let that fish get away. I did not get them get away. You did, you did. You've got to reach down and you should just sort of tickle them. Just like tickle them underneath. Now, just use a Roger moron. <laughs> and then something, perhaps your heavy thudding human and elven tread. Aldrich just going clank, clank, clank. <laughs> clank, clank, clank. <laughs> yeah, that's more like it, yeah. <laughs> they stop and they're like... Hello. Look around, leap to their feet, looking com complete, complete shock at the. I I raise my hands. Humans, elves, half elves, tiefling, and then a moonlight. <laughs> the sight of you, Bella, seems to pause them in their flight momentarily, and in the fluting whitish tongue back and forward. They chatted quickly to each other. What this? How are they here? I didn't hear them. Did you hear them? Why is there one of us with them? Well, I don't recognize her. She's not from Flamebound. One of them nudges the other. Come on, shoot, come on. I talk back in Moonlight. No, I'm not. We just arrived here. How did you get here? She opened a rainbow bridge. A what? A rainbow bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, really? It exists? Ancient elven magic. To the rest of you, unless you can speak moon white, all you hear are these kind of high-pitched whistling and whispering noises. Aunt is going to be looking around to see if there's any cats that she can save. And Aldrich is just standing there with this rather like. <laughs> hey, Hagen is looking around where. <laughs> what's, what's your name? My name is Bellis. Oh, I'm Jute. That's Jandira. Okay, what? I'm from I'm from Grim. Grim. Yes. Is that near Flamebow? No, it's far, far away across the seas. Seas? There are no moon whites over the seas. Oh, yes, there are. Really? Really. Are you a good swimmer? Nah, well, decent, but mainly forest pools and that kind of thing. Not so. <gasps> oh, we've got a lovely forest pool. It's got moonlight from the first... Oh, Jandira slaps you. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, what do you, we should, we should, uh, uh, we're actually, we're actually coming to visit his sister. She's here, apparently. This is why we're here. N not sister. Sorry. Uh, I can't mother. Sorry. What you're saying. I, I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> mother, I mean. Got an intuition. <laughs> yeah. There's no elves here anymore. There isn't? Not since... Not since the last story finished. Oh. Long time ago. No, Jindira interrupts. There was that one. One came. Was that one? 
Yeah, well, you wouldn't know. You're too busy fishing. Too busy tickling them under their stomachs. <laughs> Was it a woman, perhaps? An elven woman? Well, I can't I can't tell the difference, to be honest, but Fandrassa would know. <laughs> okay. Mm. Can, you, can you bring us to her? I don't know if we're supposed to. Well, we can wait here. Maybe you can bring her to us. Maybe this, no. Is that better? <laughs> just, she's really important. I know, but so are we. Or at least they are. Really? No, come with us. Come on. Okay. What's going on? Um, we're following with them, but we have to do it respectfully, please. Uh, okay. Where are they taking us? Um, to meet their important leader, I would expect. Ah, okay. Well, lead on then. Apparently, there are no more elves on this island. I thought, aren't they elves? No, these are Moonwhite, like me. You're not an elf? No. I told you this. But you still haven't told me anything about Moonwhite. Another time, another time. Huh. Okay. Um. Well, Jandira and Jute, a little way ahead of you, skipping merrily along the uh, the pastoral pathway, looking back over the back over their shoulders at you every so often. Mm -hmm. This way, through here. Have I heard about Moonwhites living here? I, mean, I want to know much about this land. As far as you know, there's Moonwhites everywhere. They just hide quite well. <clears throat> Do I know anything enough. much of the history of this place? Galhanoi? Galhanoi was where the elves came into being. They were driven from this land in an ancient war and went north and founded Ardminia. Now, you've since learned that at least some of that's not true um, because a one offshoot at least went uh, east and settled in what's now the Dead Forest. So. Mm -hmm. How much of what you know to be true is perhaps uh, open to revision? But nevertheless, we, so yes, go ahead. Do we know where we are in relation to where we were? Or like on a geographical level? Like, is this an island or is this a you are on continent? The, you are on the same continent on the far western edge. Ah, okay. Okay. I thought this was a different dimension. Chant is just like, no, she mm -hmm. just thinks we're somewhere else. <laughs> Okay. So presumably we would have seen it maybe mentioned on a map somewhere or something yeah, like that. Yeah, almost certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In the company of the two Moonwhites, then you follow the river upstream until you round a bend and see the sunlight streaming down the valley. Well, that's pretty here. And illuminating... Well, I mean, to call it a tree is an understatement. A great, thick, bold leviathan of ancient arboreal majesty, its branches dripping with leaves like crystallized fire. Flame bow, Jute says. Beautiful. Wow. It is. It's beautiful. That's the biggest tree I've ever seen. Two. Both of them give a two-tone fluting whistle to signal their approach. And you can see Moonwhites emerging on the branches of the tree from behind the rocks. A couple pop up out of the water, curious and whispering, eyeing you, Bellis, with them with more curiosity, your companions, particularly those who are either elven or share elven blood. Hmm. They're supposed to be dead. Why then or maybe they're ghosts. Hagen hey, eyes there. them right back. He looks like, that one looked at me. Don't look at them, they'll steal your soul. Oh. Everyone knows that about elves. I'm assuming they're all talking in their own tongue. Yeah. Yeah. This way. Uh, Ald Aldrich looks really oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> Bellis is containing her laughter. <laughs> Jute 
and Jandira leads you right up to the base of the tree, and it just towers away above you. You can oh, completely have to crane your neck to be able to see the upper branches. And at the bottom, you can see a split in the trunk with a cavernous interior beyond. Illuminated by hanging fairy lights. In there, wow, an assembly of moon whites. Some working at what appear to be tiny forges, crafting strange silver items. As you walk past Aldrich, they appear to be spinning them out of the air itself, breathing forth little puffs of silver, and catching them and working them into material form. Wow. I'm staring at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, kneel down next to them. And I'm like, wow. Just like... <laughs> No, I, I stay. I, I keep a respectful distance. I'm just kind of looking. I'm not trying to steal it. <laughs> oh, Drake, you big brute! <laughs> okay, get up and walk away. <laughs> Toward the rear of the uh, the first cavern, and you can see, in fact, they open up in all directions, all throughout the tree. There's a. Uh, quartet of well I, mean, I don't want to call them large moon whites but they're um, I mean at least the size of a dwarf oh heavily set with uh, long fine shafted spears and standing just in front of them they form a short semicircle behind her there's a moon white woman who has something that, Bellis, you've never seen on one of your kind before. Wrinkles. <gasps> it's the only sign, to, sign of age on her. Her hair is, of course, completely white. Her eyes, of course, completely black. But there are these fine traceries of lines around the side of her head that move and shift with her expression. <clears throat> um, I uh, fall to my knees and bow my head in deference. Clearly, this is a very old and very wise one. Shoot. Who have you brought us? She asks. Um, that one's called Bellis. They're elves. They're not ghosts. Um, I think that one's an orc, he says, no. pointing at Aldric. And, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, um, some he's, kind of... He's ugly, but he's a human. Some kind of goat monster? I don't really know. I'm not sure. Seeing them point at her, she's just going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> That's a human? That's a thief tiefling? And, well, that's a human too. Human. Hello. Yes. Hmm. I see. Seeing um, Bella's bow, um, Aldric goes down on one knee, leans on his round sir. Enough, enough. She bows her head, clenches her hand in front of her breast and her mouth, and then opens her fist. And now the common tongue of Imperial Torlax spills forth. Get up. Get up. Uh, human. Um, I, I stand up. I am Thandrasa. You seem to come in peace, though you are very heavily armed. I offer you water from the ground, fruit from the bow, a place to rest your weary limbs. What brings you to flame bow? And by what means do you come here? I am. Um... Elven magic. 
elves. And we seek an elven lady, Kementhalia. As you're saying this, the ground shakes again. And from outside the tree, that high pitched, agonized wail comes once more. The Moonlights look around in some fear. You can see parents holding their kids close. A couple of them, hands over their delicate ears. Work at the forges continues. Trading at the market resumes. As you can see disquiet in their faces. Come. We shall sit. Is, is, is she okay? Hmm. I'm guessing is that her? Body, is that her? <laughs> she leads you back through the rear of the main grotto and to where there is a uh, small aperture at the back of the tree. A little room with comfortable seats seemingly grown out of the side of the wood made more comfortable with cushions and an opening that gives you like a window and a balcony across the water where the sunlight sends rosy streams of light to illuminate the gently rolling and lapping waves of the river above you the leaves of the flame bough form a pale red canopy Kimanthalia. A name I have not heard in many years. Yes, she came here. And we believe she started the cries. Maybe they are hers. Maybe she awoke something. Some child of the elder race. Who can say? And she passed into the west of here. Did not return. The cries began. Occasional. Intermittent. Sometimes months or years between them. And now? Until yesterday. Now, several times a day. <laughs> and then here you are. Why do you seek her? She's my mother. My sorrow is with you. I'm waiting for Jadarian to speak some more. <clears throat> I guess we no longer need to be here then. West, you say? To the tear, yes. What did she do to awake the cries and where are they coming from? They don't know if she did. She came here seeking Coralon's tear. What is that? Do I know that name? <clears throat> Carolon? Well, Carolon the Raffian. Oh, I know that one, yeah, but do I know what that is? Your elf friend here could probably tell you the story, but in ancient times, the father, or sometimes mother god of the elves, Carolon the Raffian, did battle against the demoness, who I will not name. And in that battle, 
he shed tears of sorrow. In other versions of the story, it is drops of blood. But these droplets fell to earth. And from them were born the Edelar. Aye. The forefathers of the elves. One still remains. One survived the attempted genocide of the Edelar by the elder race. This Kementalia sought Cordelon's tear. Do you know what she intended to do with this tear? I do not. And she did not return. Where did she go? To the west. To the tear. <clears throat> Did she mention where that where she thought that would be? Oh, <clears throat> we told her where it would be. Okay. I sent a guide to show her the way. If you seek it also, um... I believe we that would be helpful. We have. Yeah. And if that's the quickest way to find her, then by all means. If you are willing to offer us a guide. Did, did your guide return? Yes, my guides are not foolish enough to approach the tier. They will go no further than the cursed city. Ah, there's a cursed city. The tier lies on its outskirts. The Edelar slew one of the elder race there. It is said its body still lies within the city and its ghost haunts the ruins. We are what not is, foolish enough. What elder race do you speak of? There was another race. It is said demons made them. But they are not demons? They made war upon the Edelar. The... The land of Galhanoi was razed. Its cities turned to ruins. The Edelar fled before the Elder Race. And no stories came back to Galhanoi of either Edelar or those who hunted them. The other are gone, but elves remain, their pale shadows of the elder race here. We know nothing of them. Yet the moon whites endured. Where there is moonlight. We are forever born. Forever tied to this earth. Forever dreamed, yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Aaron, what do you wish to do? Sorry. Well, we go seeking my mother. I'm just... We are not fully equipped for fighting undead, as we've noticed. You think this creature is undead? This elder... Elder race creature? Who knows? A cursed city, ancient cursed city, not going to be much living there. Did she leave any message for you with you, 
Or did she leave anything behind? No, she did not. Okay. You have a beautiful place here. This is a beautiful land. Yes, it is. It has long recovered since the days of the first war between the Avalad and the Elder Race. It reminds me of Grimm. It brings me a peace I haven't felt in quite a while. Hmm. Nice. Part of this place reminds me of home. And as I say that, I look up to the sky to see what sort of time of day it is. Uh, here it's earlier in the day than you were, where you were. The morning light is just filling the valley. How long till we find this tear? From here? You can be there by late afternoon. It is a day's ride, a walk, through the hills and the forest. Would you be so kind to ready us a guide? I will. Thank you. Do you know what dangers may lurk in this cursed city? Do not enter the cursed city. The ghost of one of the elder races haunts it. You will find the tear on its outskirts. If you love life, do not set foot within its streets. Understood. And on the way there, the, any any creatures native to this land that we must keep an eye out for? This is Galhanoi, the place that is evergreen. Well, that certainly sounds pleasant. <laughs> Monsters that are in children's tales. They are not real. Here. <laughs> Fair enough. Rest yourselves. I will seek for you a guide. May I inquire one last thing? that your smiths are crafting rings of silver out of thin air. How are they doing that? The air is not thin. <laughs> and, and and would you be willing to part with such a ring if for payment? Or an exchange, perhaps? I will make of it a gift to you. Oh, that is not necessary. I, I I wouldn't want to impose. It is no imposition. It is a pleasure to give. Well, I thank you for your generosity. Inside check. <clears throat> um, There's no such thing. <laughs> 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 She stands. I will seek Doreth. He is the best of our guides. Thank you. At the doorway she turns. Bellis. Yes. If you wish while you wait, I can have Jute show you the moon pool. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, darling. <clears throat> This way. Jude is uh, not hard to find for her. Mm -hmm. The young uh, 
Moon White listens as she says quite simply Bellis wishes to see the pool take her show her this way Jude says I turn around thank you Mother Valadrasa Jude leads you back to the main shoreline and through a little ravine where the day's light is almost immediately entirely lost. And uh, through to the far side where it opens up ahead of you and you see yourself staring down at a shadowed grotto where water that seems to glimmer with its own internal light curves around the base of old twisted roots. There are uh, three other moon whites already bathing in the pool. They're clothed in little heaps. Mm -hmm. Um, Jude already starts to strip off. Mm -hmm. Come on. Bellis, Bellis follows suit immediately. Okay. Have you been to a, into a moon pool before, he says? At home, but not one like this. Not like this. The thought is hanging on your mind as you hit the water. Splash down underneath. There's no water down there at all a storm you're floating above a storm churning and spinning up above you you see a stone bridge spanning a great canyon there's a city on the bridge Tavarish. and down down into the storm into its eye there's something in the eye. You let your senses drop lower. At first you think it's another rainbow bridge, a shimmering, twisting vortex of light. No, not a bridge, but yes, a doorway. But it doesn't go to anywhere. With the surety of vision, you know that it goes back somewhere. <sighs> to a time before the night of no stars. When a different moon was in the sky and different gods in the heavens and all the world was and then you come up from under the water. Dorath is kind of floating in front of you, grinning. Oh, wow. This pool still has light from the first moon, from before the night of no stars. I saw that. Oh, amazing. Uh, is he a friend of yours? I turn around. Um, there's an elf standing on the uh on the side of the uh, of the bank jute and the other uh, other moon whites look considerably concerned um particularly so uh when the elf produces a wand and unleashes a blast of lightning at the water the electricity streaks across the pool your entire body you're floating there, completely stunned. From the trees on either side, figures in dark clothes rush down. Your senses move sluggish, your limbs won't respond. Bound, gagged, hooded, dragged out of the water. Oh. 
Let's stare it to 100 real quick. After a while, Mother Thandrasa returns. Your friend is at the pool too long, I think, she says. And we thought, we thought she was with you. Uh, no. We should go at once. Comes stumbling into her council chamber. Hair still dripping wet. He just has clearly pulled on a pair of trousers. The rest of his clothes are nowhere to be seen. His face is smeared with mud. There's blood around his feet as if he's been running barefoot through trees and undergrowth. And the exertion of his flight, all of his energy leaves him. He falls to one knee, grabs at his mistress. They took him. They took her. <laughs> they took all of them. Who took who? There was an elf. <laughs> Did you do this? Did you bring them here? What are, you, what are you talking about? We were bathing in the pool, and he came, and he had a stick, and it made lightning. Well, that's no friend of ours. <sighs> What's happened? <laughs> well, I would very much like to know that. Can you please tell me? Show me where they took them. Thandrasa puts her hand on his shoulder and whispers words of quiet sorcery. His emotions calm. We were bathing in the moon pool and then an elf came and he shot electricity in the water. And men came running from the trees and took everybody and I got away and I ran back here. I suppose you fled too quickly to see which way they went. And what color they were wearing? Dark colors. I could, I could probably guess which way they went. Well, we if we go to the area, we might be able to see if they left a track. Or any snagged bits of clothing. Mm. Yeah, let's not waste any time. Yes. The more time we, we sit here, the l more distance they can put between us. Agreed. I, uh, how, how did you get away? Like, uh, did, uh, were they following you? Or? There were four of them. And, and, and then there were, there were five of us. And they, they just they weren't just they just weren't quick enough for me. And it was just it was just just luck, I think. Just just moon white's luck. She uh, gives him a hug if he'll let her. <laughs> he just bursts into tears. They'll <laughs> 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 be they'll be okay. We're gonna go save them. It's okay. Don't worry. Uh, I'm I'm getting I'm yeah. putting on my armor or putting on my helmet. I'm already going, following uh, his yeah. footprints. Yep. If you do this, Tandrasa says, there is nothing we will not give you that we have. The blessings of Sister Moon go with you. I, uh, yeah. Let's just lead I'm the way. I'm already out. gone. Get, make, I'm following make, the make wet footprints. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Me too. We've yeah. already left. We're gone. I'm going. Chanta, come on. Good. I'd have like, it's not going to be okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> we let our guards down. Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm. Okay. Hating. Yes. So you go at considerable speed. Jute directs you toward where the moon pool is. And, uh, well. You can all see it on the picture. On the far side, there are ruins, almost certainly from the time of the Ethelar. Right? There's almost nothing left of them. 
truly, truly ancient. But uh, Jadarian. Yep. You see tracks. So this way. Four people moving at considerable haste through the trees. I get a squee um, uh, out so he can keep an eye out perception wise. Yes. Okay. I have um, my sword at the ready. Your toad makes it completely clear that you're not being followed. Looking in all directions at the same time. Jadarian leading the way ahead. It's for the better part of an hour, moving at heightened pace through the trees, following their trail. They're not attempting to cover it. They clearly don't think that Moon Whites are a big enough threat to follow them. Perhaps not knowing that there are more than Moon Whites in Galhanoi now. Any uh, torn off bits of clothing or flag or... Here or there, a little bit of a... Uh, a torn cape, but mainly it's footprints, booted footprints running through the undergrowth. And then up ahead, the trees begin to clear. And you see in the clearing a small mound, a hillock really, atop which has been erected a rapidly constructed but serviceable camp, lightly fortified. I hold my hand up for him to stop. <clears throat> and then crouch down. Alright. Get into cover. I'll do the same. I'm just yeah. going to look. I, uh, I urge Shanta to do the same. And I okay. do this. <laughs> <laughs> You're being quiet! No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's gonna, she'll she'll, she'll have to, uh, follow with you guys straight away. Duck down and things. Hagen, could you perhaps investigate? Wait. Yeah. Wow. Do your thing, oh great and wise Nightingale. What are we waiting for, Jadarian? Gather up. Gather together. Mm. And he sort of like starts to whisper, Sari, Irina, Halda, Kanta, and repeats the words over and over again and starts placing the hand on each of them and they sort of blend into the environment I mm -hmm. say so if you move move extremely slowly or they will see you so basically we're all camouflaged yes nice <clears throat> <laughs> well we are not all as stealthy as you Hagen <laughs> I'd probably need to cast that twice actually fair enough Hagen's going to go try and scale the walls. Okay. So you can see the map there. It's on a uh, an outcrop with a sort of low section and a high section. There's a large tent on the higher section and uh, 17 or 18 smaller tents, wagons, a little store hut, and uh, what appears to be an enclosure. That's From this distance, turn. you can, in the one turn duration. Per level. Per level. Oh, what's, okay, a right. what's a turn now? Is it a minute? Ten rounds. Ten rounds, right, okay. I'll yeah, tell so them how long they've got, how long we've got. Okay, so you've got like uh, 40 minutes, so. Okay. Um, Benes? You and your uh, fellow Moon Whites are dumped unceremoniously, and you can just make it out through the, uh, through the hood that's been placed over your head in the enclosure on the western side of the encampment. Although the Moon Whites don't know it, you are familiar with human tongues. And they're not from Torlek but they're probably from one of the kingdoms just to the west of it. And you recognize something of the speech of your abductors. Four of them. How much per head? Ooh, moonlights. Three, four hundred a head. 
we can get these into the Empire. Now I'll fetch some good coin there. Moonwhite says good luck. Yeah, but we're just picking them out of the water. Oh, I know, I've told you. The ones that live here are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they think they're the only Moonwhites in the world. I've been coming here for years. The whole northern region picked clean by now. Damn it. Wow. It's like taking fruit from a baby. Um, are we in a in a hold holding cell or what are we? <laughs> You're literally kind of in, uh, if you can see the uh, the map. You just, you've got, been tied and gagged and uh, hood over your head and just kind of thrown into an enclosure where you might normally keep cattle. The other three Moonwhites with you are in various states of sheer numbed terror, quiet confusion, or gently sobbing. Yes. Um, I'm going to use my illusionist uh, sleight of hand tricks to see whether I can get loose. Okay. You start working on your bonds first. Oh, yes. All right. Hagen. Yes. Even if I can wiggle enough free so I can actually uh, do the, the the somatic component of uh, an anti uh, yeah. cantrip or something yeah. like that. Okay, which which uh, side of the encampment are you uh, going to have a, a look at? Which wall are you shimmying up? Um, he going to probably start with the low wall and then try and make his way around and see if he can spot anything suspicious. Um, if not the moon whites themselves, then maybe men leaping in area as if it was a raiding part. Yeah. Um, you get a fairly good overview of the camp itself. And uh, you can see that on the, uh, the gate, there are four guards there. Mm. There's another four situated around the campfire by the... Um, the little uh, store tent, a little uh, kind of storage uh, hut. That's the, um, the the southernmost of the two campfires. They're supposed to be guarding the hut, but they're mainly sitting around the campfire eating. Um, there's another four just patrolling the outskirts of the pen, and in there you can see four moon whites. And there's another four outside the large tent. So that's what, 16 in all? That's 16, yeah. Um, uh, Romeo D20, please. 18. Okay. Um, there's a 17th one. Uh, he's behind the main tent. Because uh, mm. up a height, sort of doing a, a round as a sort of lookout, because he's got the elevation. And uh, as you watch, out from the main tent to talk to the guards, comes the figure of a moon white in fine silk clothes with a rapier by his side. He nods and passes some words back and forward between them, listens to their report, and then goes back in the tent. I'm going to be up near Hagen as well. Sneaking. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then I'm going to. Uh, I'll I'll skirt round to be underneath Hagen where he's skirting yep. the walls. Yep. I'll stay with Chanta because someone hey, has hey. to. Chanta <laughs> hey, would hey. probably look over, see Avil, and then be like, and then continue to follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can move at ten foot around if you break that. By going more, then that's it. <clears throat> rather than, well, I'm, rather I'm than sticking with Chanta, <laughs> wherever she may go. Rather than risking away. noise, Her, uh, Hagen looks out over the wall at the people below. Just Sorry, I didn't okay. catch that. You cut out. It was there. just. It was out. just seven. A, a oh. Ten and then ten. A seven. Yep. Seventeen. Ah. Yep. I can count. Perhaps we can... <laughs> Go ahead. We could take some out quickly and quietly. 
agreed. Or we could create a distraction. And make him go to sleep. The one, the one behind the tent. He's not in clear view of everyone else, is he? Um, sometimes he is. He's he's like walking around the tent, doing a round, basically. Sometimes oh, no. he is. Sometimes he isn't. How high are these? Um, the, the elevation. The little, the, yeah, the elevation. Okay, the lower one is fifteen feet high, mm-hmm. and the upper one is another twenty feet above that. And the walls? Okay. Uh, the walls themselves are about ten foot high. I have 50 feet of rope, so I can toss that down whenever anybody wants to scale up. Cool. I could um, shield myself and then make them all go to sleep. Perhaps we should try and and, uh, and scale the wall be- behind the tents and the wa- where those two wagons are and use the wagons as cover on the other side. My spells do help with being stealthy, but you are wearing armor, Aldrich. They will hear you. It'll be like a, a, a bush walking along wearing armor. Clunk, 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 clunk. Right. You, you Maybe the three take of you. Off the armor, and I can. Oh no, I, I can't cast shield on someone else. What I guess the I'm the distraction you, then. Wait for <laughs> the three yes, of you. Wait for the right. signal, and then Shanta tries her sleep spell on the front gate. Yeah. Okay, I, you try your sleep spell on the shunt. Yeah. Am I already loose? And then I'll go charging in. Mm. Sure. I'll be the distraction. You guys do your best to free the prisoners. If you hear okay. alarm, that's when you spring your trap. But until you hear any sort of alarm, then wait. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're Makes hoping sense. he takes them out quietly. We have a trap. I assume Hagen. The trap is me. I assume Hagen can't hear any of this. No. Great. I'll okay, I, Sorry. I I I <laughs> uh, look up I look up at Hagen, and I go. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> well, I, I make I make it subtle. I don't. I'm trying. I'll, I'll I'll say I'll I'll let him know. Okay, let him know. I'll head up towards Hagen. I'm assuming he's seen us. Okay. I'll relay the plan to him. And I'll say... Oi! <laughs> what, mate? <clears throat> We're going to try to take some out quietly. And as soon as any alarm's raised, that's when they're going to get ready. All right. I'll do my best. I'll knock an arrow. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to try and find that one guard and uh, drop down behind him, behind the tent. Um, So you're going to skirt around to where he is. Gotcha. Yep. Nice. Okay. Um, Right, who's who's taking the first shot here? I'll wait. Obviously, I'll be looking. So they're all holding for me and Hagen. I'm I'm watching Hagen up high. Yeah, so he's dropped down. I'm his cover. And if he... Doesn't take if he takes this guy out quietly, then obviously I'm just going to keep an eye on him and move around with him. I am going to right. shield myself before we enter into combat as well. Gotcha. Yeah, you get a surprise round, so uh, Hagen, go All for right. it. You got a 20 on the move silently roll, so you up, over, down, behind him, right when he's behind the tent and out of sight of the others. Thanks. And um, he is a mighty two hit dice. I do let him know, though, as soon as you attack, you drop this camouflage. Yeah, so that's a uh, 60% assassination chance for you. All right. Hagen keeps No, 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 sorry, 65. Oh. He's a dire sheath until the last moment. There's a flash of blue right before he plunges it into him. (laughs) And I rolled a 54. Yeah! Yes. <laughs> the uh, blue blade sinks right into his back. You have your hand over his mouth, lower him noiselessly to the ground. <laughs> okay, the lookout's dead. What next? So he, he's now, I can now see him. Yes. I'm going to slit the back of the tent and try and uh, take a peek in there. <sighs> okay. 
<laughs> oh god. It's just gonna be like a little picnic and just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look inside. Um there is uh, a fairly fancy uh, portable bedroll, like a trestle bed that's been laid out, um, mm. uh, a small set of chairs, uh, a table that looks like it has a probably a map of Galhanoi on it, um, a small chest, mm. and a, a moonlight kind of leaning on the table, looking at the map, and uh, making notes in what appears to be a ledger or an accounts book of some kind. Mm. My first slaver book, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is this back away uh, toward me or away from me? It's t- it's away from you. Ah, he's not facing you. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, he's so not back, facing. His back is towards you. Yes, his back turned. Ah, yes. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, part of me wants to put the dagger to his throat and try to question him, but. Part of me wants to just be done. With it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm just going to come in and try and assassinate him. Yes, that's probably the best course of action. Uh, okay, We're you're, a, you're least, a fo- least complicated. Forty-five, forty-five percent chance. Uh, and right, we make, make me a move silently roll for us, please. Kill now. Questions okay. later. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Bellis right, can please. get Uh-oh. raised. I don't know. <laughs> Bellis Uh-oh. can be Bellis. Sixty-eight. Oh, no. 68. No. Okay. Uh, he spins on the spot. Um, and you can see whips out a wand. You realize whoever the elf was by the side of the pond was probably not really an elf. Um, at any rate, this is the only thing that goes through your mind as... Uh, can I just, see this? You just, well, <laughs> you see what happens next. He's going in the tent. There's a moment of pause. Room. There's a moment of pause, and then the entire tent is illuminated from within by brilliant white light, and there's a sound like thunder, and a lightning bolt streaks out of the one straight towards you, Hagen. Um, can you make me a saving throw against wands, please? And you can apply your dex reaction modifier to this. Do I get a shot lightning? Yes. Uh, let's see. I had my saving throws adjusted, but I think my computer... Okay. Let me let's take a look at that real quick. Um, yeah, I think at level five, your saving thumbs get better. It goes, yeah. it goes up by like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to check that. Is there anybody else you can focus on while I'm looking at this? I've got it for you right here. Okay, cool. Okay, just roll me a d20. Yeah. That is a naked 11. Naked 11, okay, and uh, it's, you need a 12, but your dex is high enough to give you a plus one bonus. Okay, cool. So you throw yourself sideways just as the lightning bolt <laughs> streaks towards you and only take half damage. Um, so that's 10, 24, 12 damage. It's still a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage, yeah, so you're on... Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of damage. I'm on 13. I'm you're, on nine, you're on 19, you have 31 hit points. Oh, I've, oh. <laughs> okay, so yeah, everybody hears and sees this. Um, Bellis, it's at this moment that you manage to get your wrists free. At the same time as the lightning bolt. And the lightning bolt, by the way, streaks out the back of the tent for about another 75 feet out into the open air. Um, so I guess we're going to have to have an initiative roll now. Well, we we yeah. all get a bonus. Well, obviously, we're all still surprised. So, And I've got an, I've got an arrow knocked. Right, so initiative rolls, please. Yes. <clears throat> three, five. Okay. Uh, okay, that was. Uh, I believe you'll get a plus Abba, four to initiative a, as well. Uh, adjust three. A five from Shanta, a three from Balis. Uh, Aldric? Wait, do we adjust it? What's this, somebody, somebody saying adjust it three? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're you get a plus four initiative from me as well. Oh, really? Oh, we do? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I have a nine oh, then. Oh, oh okay. I have a seven. Okay. Um, in that case, I get a yeah. uh, 12. 12, okay. And give me the other numbers uh, adjusted, Bellis. Oh, Bellis, wait, this doesn't apply to you. No, you I'm adjusted three still, yeah. Three. Okay, uh, Shanta? Nine. Nine. Uh, Hagen? Eight. Your, cam- your camouflage is gone. Right. You, don't, you don't get the plus four. So it's just <clears> a four. <throat> well, well, I, 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 got, I got 12. He, he doesn't get a four from me. Okay, and Avil? Uh, seven. Five. Okay. 
All right. Uh, okay, wow. Um, Aldric and Jadarian and the champion next. I shoot the three arrows at the Moonwhite. Yeah, I'll let uh, he goes first because uh, okay. he's Moonlight's, faster. The Moonwhite's inside. The, you can't see. The, the lightning bolt, surely I just got rid of the tent. Is it not? No. No. <laughs> it's blown a, out through the uh, the slit at the back, but certainly not enough to allow you to hit the guy. You um, need to be up on top of the... Uh, you can run into the tent and shoot him, sure. Yeah, I'll do. Well, yeah, I'll move and do that. Then. Okay. All right. Roll. And I get three attacks because I've obviously had one knocked. Yeah. Uh, he is armor class uh, twenty-three, by the way. I was lucky. I've got a plus four to hit then. Um, so it's fourteen is my lowest one. That is plus eleven. So that's twenty-four, twenty-eight, twenty-eight, thirty, and thirty-one. I'm guessing they all hit. Yes, don't bother running damage though. The arrows hit him and seem to kind of bounce off his body as if his skin were made of stone. Uh, Aldric, at the same time, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to charge through the uh, straight at the front gate and just okay. lay into the guards. Wow, uh, okay. not a surprise. <laughs> <clears throat> are, right. they, are they uh, considered uh, combat dominated? No, they're not. Oh, what a shame! They look a little bit. They do look a little bit surprised at this bush suddenly that kind of gets up and charges <laughs> at them. They're like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Um, well, I, I attack. Uh, here we go. That uh, the first attack is a modified uh, sixteen. These guys are armor class seventeen. The guys in the gate. Okay. And then the second attack is You've got plus four to hit from me. By the way. I do. Mm -hmm. Well, for the, then, for the that's, first attack, that's the first attack is a modified twenty. Then, okay. and uh, the second attack is a half strike, and that's a modified uh, nineteen, and that does. Sorry, uh, ten damage. Oh, I didn't do the damage for the first one, did I? And um, that's uh, twelve damage. So twelve okay. and ten. 12 and 10. Right, the other... Uh, 12 kills a guy, eviscerating him with the Rancer, and then you swing with the half strike, crack, slam one of his companions in the chest. You can hear the guy's sternum crack under the impact. He goes down to one knee, coughing blood, pulls himself up, grievously, grievously injured. Okay, Shanta and uh, Hagen, you're next. Sorry, so, no, Avril, you're next. Yeah. So, uh, I... Try and cast sleep. It's two d four hit dice of monsters. Correct. Yes, and which group are you? Uh, the ones on the gate, the ones guarding the moonwhites, the ones by the campfire, or the four outside the commander's tent? Um, the ones guarding the moonwites, I'd say. Okay, go for it. Uh, that is five. Um, you just see her. Um, yeah. she just kind of looks at them, uh, waves her hands, and you just see this. Uh yellow type almost glow it's kind of sparkly it's pretty um and then she just kind of like goes Shh, and then they just slowly drop to the ground with a nice two, thud two of them drop the other two, two remain them. standing yeah drop. they're like what the, what the hell? it was five i got five yeah. on the dice yeah yes. it's not fifth edition <laughs> dang it it's hit dice. You've affected five hit dice. These guys have more than one hit dice. So, I mean, so two of them are affected. Down they go. Uh, the other two look around in complete shock, hearing the lightning bolt, seeing the attack on the main gate. Uh, okay, Hagen and uh, sorry, Avil. Hagen, you're next. Okay, so um, I'm just sort of rolling my eyes and charging in behind Aldric, and um, I'd like to just. Uh, is there like one close to me? If yeah, I sure. go through there, the front there's, gate. There's okay, four, of well, on the, four of them on the gate. I'm just going to unsheath my copresh and um, take a swing at his legs to try and knock okay. him off balance. Yeah, these guys are AC 17. Okay, do I get a plus four? Four. For the first attack, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 17, and I got uh, six damage. Okay. Presumably you're attacking ones, one of the ones that I didn't. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you hack at his legs. Um, he drops, hits the ground, bleeding copiously. 
All right, Hagen, Venice, you're up next. Okay, Hagen, uh, seeing this arrow bounce off of the Moonlight skin, he will take out his uh, magic dagger and see what it can do, if anything. Okay. Um, Going well, for the guy's armor class, he's armor class 23. Oh, okay, yeah. well. Uh, no, six will not hit that. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he dances away from your blade and uh, unsheathes his rapier. Uh, Bellis is last, okay. Um, Bellis, you. Hey, hey oh <clears throat> I'm talking to the guy, uh, it's one of the two guys who are still not sleeping in front of my uh, uh, enclosure. Yeah. Do I get his attention? He kind of looks over. Open. That's a command. <laughs> okay. You all right? <laughs> what are you doing? You're letting the pixies out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, the uh, slaver commander has his rapier out now, Hagen, and lunges at you. A one. <laughs> Completely fails to connect. I mean, you don't, you, you don't even have to dodge. It's that terrible a move. Um, okay, on the gate itself, uh, Aldrich. Yes. Two guards lunge at you. A pair of tens is not going to cut it. And uh, the one who you knocked off uh, his feet, Avil, stabs upwards at you. Likewise, uh, you easily avoid the blow. Um, within the camp itself, the four guards outside the tent come rushing in, uh, Hagen, and uh, all four hurl themselves at you in defense of their commander. Oh, boy. GTFO, GTFO. Uh, <laughs> Hagen, you managed to avoid all but a single blow from one of them. Wow. Wow. Three, four. Nevertheless, you take five damage. Puts you on 14 hit points. A, uh, a fairly well-placed blow. And there's actually some skill to these swordsmen. They're not uh, not completely green, shall we say. Um, the four around the campfire who were supposed to be guarding the stores, they go running down to the main gate. Nobody aware of the, uh, the threat lurking within the Moonwhite enclosure at present. <clears throat> Okay, Aldric and Jadarian, and uh, Shanti, you're next. Jadarian goes first. I'll just look at the uh, the group that are surrounding Hagen, and then just just point my hands to the hand towards them and say "Auta Leoma," and cast Grease. Okay. <laughs> uh, two of them fall. Two of them remain standing, but the floor all around them is now completely, uh, completely slippy. Um, the other two are kind of sliding, smearing around in the uh, in the slime. Uh, okay, and uh, Aldric. Yes, um, I'm going to uh, hold on one quick second. Yeah, I'm going to uh, just attack the guys. Yeah. All right. First one is a uh, modified 22, and that does uh, 11, sorry, uh, 11 damage. Okay, the, the, kills him. The second one, the one you're already injured. is a modified 21, and that does nine points of damage. Okay, grievously injures the, uh, the third combatant oh, against whom you're fighting. Sorry, that was 11 points of damage. Okay, was, really was, previously injured. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last uh, 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 main attack then. Um, that's a natural 20. Okay, and there's max and damage, yeah, yeah. which Kill. is killsing. Yeah. You strip him of his solitary hit points and, uh, and then natural some. 20 is in chat. <laughs> if I can... Um, those men that are coming towards me, I'm going to use my move action to set my runcer to, to receive a charge. Okay. Um, right. Shanta and Avril, you're next. Yeah. Uh, is there a clear leader that I can see? Or, like, you said about the other Moon White that was just in fine clothes, but is they still hidden 
away. Um, <clears throat> if you get up to where Hagen is, you'll be able to see him. Um, I'll get up to where Hagen is if I can, and I will attempt to charm that person. Okay. If I may. <laughs> 18. No, that's a pass. He yes, shatters your attempt to uh, sway his mind and focus himself on uh, filling Hagen full of holes with his pointy bits. Okay, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Um, Abel, oh, a uh, rather disturbing image. <laughs> <laughs> Abel, uh, Hagen, you're next. Um, can I try and cast sleep on the person that's attacking Hagen? Absolutely. Okay, um, sorry, I'm really bad with spells. Do I have to roll something? Roll 2d4. Okay. See, you can tell I've never played a spell caster. Um, that is, uh, five. Five. Okay. Um, the two who were not uh, sliding around in the grease collapse in slumber. Hagen just hit the hit huh. the deck and start snoring. Okay, Hagen okay. and the then Bellis are up. All right. So the only one still standing here is just that moonlight, right? Yeah. Uh, dare I try for another stab? Or um, I'm gonna go for it. Stab! 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 Oh, no, that's not gonna hit. That's only an eleven. Uh, okay, he leaps onto the table out of the way of your uh, your slashing dagger blade. Well, if I swing at him, can I then try and run for it? If you take a run for it, he'll get a free attack against you. But you can certainly run for it. <laughs> He's gonna attack me either way. I might as well try and get this out of here. Okay, so you turn and flee. He takes his uh, rear attack against you, rolls a five, and you just end of the rapier, just pings you on between the shoulder blades, fails to penetrate, and then you're out the back of the tent. Uh, okay, and uh, Bellis. So I'm imagining this guy just opened the door and the other guy, no! <laughs> oh, no, Bob! <laughs> so then at the moment when he does that, it's a right where you are, boyos. And I hold person on them. Okay, nice. And the, what, what's the saving throw penalty for two? Is Mi that a minus? Minus one. Minus one. One of them gets an 18, one of them gets a three. One of them is held in place. The other one looks at him. Bob, for God's sake, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, no, it's the pixies. And he pulls his sword. Come straight at you, Bellis. <laughs> 10, 13, your armor class is 12. Ow. Ow, uh, seven points of ow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blade uh, up across your torso, rips a long line opening your flesh. Get back, get back, you vile pixie freak. <clears throat> I give him a laugh through bloodstained teeth. Uh, okay, the uh, commander just comes chasing after uh, Hagen, only to uh, encounter Jadarian outside, and decides uh, he's worth a stabbing. Uh, manages to actually make a single attack hit. Seven, eight, nine, ten damage, Jadarian. Ouch. Experienced swordsman all. Uh, in the, te in the, the tent itself, Two of the men are still slipping out on the ground. Two of them are asleep uh, down at the gate. We have one remaining standing, desperately stabbing at Avil. Uh, 13, that's exactly a hit, Avil. Oh. Eight, and maximum damage, 11 damage. 12 hit points left. And uh, then the uh, other guards come charging through the gate. Does my uh, run, sir? Hold give on. Them Okay. You'll, get a, you'll get an attack against them this round. <laughs> okay, um, Aldric and Jadarian, and then Shanti, you're next. Have I got any idea why my attacks didn't hit? He's, he'll have some okay. kind of defensive spell, and it could be one of like half a dozen different things. Okay. Um, did, did Hagen look really hurt or something? Is that why he left? <laughs> why do you ask him? Um, he's pretty badly hurt, yeah. 
Another okay. couple of rapier stabs and uh Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm below half HP. Yeah. yeah. So am I. Um I move thirty foot back and I'm gonna shoot him with two PAL arrows to see if that makes any difference. Okay. These are mundane arrows, yeah? Uh PAL arrows. They would be, yeah. Yeah, okay, roll to hit please. Is it worth me rolling to hit? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you could just shoot one um, and then see if that ha and then shoot another one. Well, I'm guessing. I'm guessing even with a natural twenty. Hey man, no, no tactical advice from the front gate. <laughs> <laughs> you could just shoot one and then shoot another one. I kind of want a meta game to shoot the magical arrows. Man. Can I shoot magical arrows? Go ahead. You've got them, right? I've only got seven left. <laughs> Oh, well, one's a natural 20 and one's an 18 on a dice, so I'm guessing okay, they're, they're both hits. <laughs> yes. Uh, and they punch clear through his protection uh, from normal missile spell and do damage. So one's uh, maximum uh, damage, which is... Hang on. Uh, 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 arrow is 1d8 plus... Da, 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 da. Where's the damage for it? Plus 5, plus 6 damage. So that would be 14 and the other one's 13 damage. 27. 27. Wow. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I move 30 foot away from him. <laughs> yeah, the arrow stagger him. He stumbles backward, looking in shock at the fletching sticking out of his shoulders. <coughs> Coughs a mouthful of blood. And uh, she's the rapier, pulls out the wand. Things it in your direction, or will do in a moment. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Aldric. Yes. Roll for, roll, for, roll for double damage against charge. Yes. Uh, that is a uh, modified 10. Uh, sorry, uh, so a modified 20. So, That's a hit? Yes. And then... Roll to make man explode. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's... Uh, so... Uh, 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 yeah, sorry. 12 plus 6 uh, is 18. Yeah, okay. Man explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you... Just ram the guy through the middle. Um, <clears throat> his body quite literally comes apart on the uh, the point of the rapier, on the point of the ransom. Uh yes. Shanta and Apple, you're next. Uh, do I get any other attacks? Or is it it's setting to receive a charge all my attacks? Uh, you, no, you're due a half strike, that's true. Yeah, okay, I'll I do I apologize for robbing you of your blunt end. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's totally fine, I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, oh, duh, that's a 13, which is a miss. Terrible. Bye. La la. Oh, look, a bird. Um, bird. with, uh, is the, who is close to me? Hagen, how far away did you go? He's out the back of the tent. So he's, I'm still, I'm still close by. Yeah. Um, I'll try, I'll, I'll give you a, um, a charm, not a charm person, a kill wounds. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try and charm him. Honestly, just don't bother running the it, Just let it happen. Um, 1d8, I forget if I get anything. No, it's the base, the base one's just d8. Uh, that's 5 HP back. All right. Excellent, thank you. Up to 19. Negates the last come back and help now. Bestial energy fills you, and uh, the most recent of your wounds <clears throat> seals, heals over. Uh, okay, Avil, and then Hagen, you're next. Okay, um, I'd like to do my inspiration for the day, please. All right. Yes. So I'm, you know, bleeding a little bit. It's fine. Whatever. I, I take out a piece of paper that I've been writing on. And I'm like, listen up, everyone. Yes, everyone. That includes all the people that were fighting. Just listen, okay? Just a knife Just... in your chest as you're saying this. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a good one. Trust me. <clears throat> if this is a dagger <clears throat> for me. We're having doubts about the dragon. Whatever shall we do? Shall we all do what Chanta did and say, hey, I want to be friends with you? Okay, yes, we've released the dragon. I hope this goes bloody well. If we break our oath... Sounds like we'll be living in hell. <laughs> and yet, strangely, you're inspired. <laughs> yes. For five rounds. Every time. <laughs> Every time. How does she? How does Did she, she do rhyme that? hell with hell? Yeah. Well. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
a man who works for Black Sabbath. Uh, <laughs> okay, so yeah, plus one to everybody for five rounds. Uh, Hagen and then uh, Bellis at the end. All right. Hagen, uh, seeing Jadarian under attack, is going to come uh, around the side and try and flank him. Going in with the magic dagger again. And that time it is a 17 plus six should be 23. There you go. All right. Cut his fucking head off. No. Uh, and that is a six plus three is uh nine. Whoa. For damage. Okay, the dagger just goes right up to its hilt in his side. He barely even sees you coming. Ah, stagger sideways. You pull the blade out. There's just a continual rush of blood. Uh, it's a horrendous injury. He's kind of looking from side to side. I'm trying to decide who to hit with a lightning bolt. Um, if he even survives that long. Bellis. I said, right, you are, Boyo. And I follow up with another whole person. This time at a minus two. Minus two. Boy. A one! <laughs> <laughs> You're Don't mine. Me, <laughs> <laughs> Held. Um, behind you, you hear a kind of... <gasps> Bellis is a witch! The three. He's a witch. The three moonlights. Burn her. <laughs> <laughs> have been actually watching this uh, whole exchange, seeing you one by one by one, take the guards down, force the gate open, and paralyze them both. One of them kind of leans forward. I use a death spell, that is kill them all. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait. Yeah, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Uh, okay. And they turn into these little homicidal maniacs. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea of them having the most high pitched voices like, yeah, kill them! Murder <laughs> <laughs> them all! You should have uh, them off the dark. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to see their intestines. <laughs> <laughs> want to okay. their blood. Yeah. Uh, steps back, <laughs> the uh, the commander, and levels his lightning bolt wand at you, Jadarian. <laughs> Save against ones, please. Oh. That's a 19 on a dice. Is that good or bad? That's, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. 12. Plus 3, 22. Okay. It's still going to take me down, though. Uh, Hits Jadarian, knocks him off his feet, throws him out the back of the tent and slams him into the stockade wall. He falls forward, rolls onto his side. There's a plume of smoke rises from a huge scorch mark. A scorch mark across his chest. Aldric. Um, there's more soldiers coming at me, huh? Yeah, there were uh, three more alive. All right. And they're going to be attacked now. Uh, that's a modified 26 that does uh, 12 damage. And the second attack is a modified 24, which does 8 damage. And the final attack uh, is a modified 25, which does uh, 12 damage. Okay. Um... Just in a whirl of blades and uh, butt strikes, you kill two and grievously injure one of the others. Bodies fall into either side, man staggering backward, uh, his ribs stoven right in by the uh, the butt end of the rapier. Uh, Ranser. <laughs> um, no okay, uh, Shanta and then Avalon next. Uh, can I get to Jadarian? Yeah, you can. Um, giving him some cure wounds will like stabilize him, right? Okay, he's exactly on zero hit points, so he is flat unconscious. He's not actually bleeding out. He took okay. fourteen damage, so I took fourteen. Yeah, I'm on one hit point then. No, you're on zero. You're on. You are on fourteen. I thought you said I took ten damage. Yeah, and you have twenty-four hit points. Oh, I've got it down to twenty-five. Sorry. You fucking cheat. <laughs> <laughs> so if I was to uh, cure like wounds, it wouldn't... It would bring him up, yeah. It would, oh, it would him bring up. him up. Okay, yeah. I'll do that then. I'll um, I'll run over 
She'll do like a cool knee skid on the on the floor, hurt her knees. Um, feel bad for herself. Slow mo. Um, yes, yeah, slow mo. Like, <laughs> and then yes, yeah, Pinchy's like holding on, like his legs are like flapping in the wind. <laughs> 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 and she'll um she'll just like put her hands on his chest, and you'll just see this um beautiful yellow glow. And I will give you back eight HP. Whoa. Whoa. Does, that, does that mean I'm on nine now? He's like, well, I feel so much better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, Avil. Okay. Um... There's one guard left at the gate. Um, you and uh, your brother have killed all the others, and he's um, nice. uh, he, he's dealt uh, the, the surviving one a rather serious butt injury. Um, okay. He's keeping him uh, open to your uh, hook. <laughs> butt injury. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, I'm gonna go for the butt injury then, you know, or okay. whatever the follow-up is on that. Um, what am I doing? What am I saying? Anyway, um... Call shot to the nuts. Um, that is... what is that? 16? That's um, a miss by one. Really, is it? Yep. Shit. No, I've got inspiration. 17. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You um, love your own poetry so much that you hit him. Oh, bitch, I do, and I got love a... Love it the most of anyone. <laughs> And you got a what? Right. Three damage. Three. Okay. Um, he's pretty badly hurt now, staggering sideways um, from the haft of the ramsaw and the kopesh slash across his shoulders. Uh, you know, uh, he should probably get a morale check, poor guy. Oh, which he fails. Um, oh. And uh, throws down his blade. Look, I surrender. I surrender. Please, no, no, don't kill me. Don't kill me. What do you think, Aldrich? <laughs> okay, well, you can discuss that amongst yourselves. And meanwhile, it's uh, Hagen and Bellis next. Again, right. yeah, having wounded him once, goes in for another stab, hoping to finally end this. Please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. <laughs> that is 12 plus 6 is 18. Plus inspiration. Guys, they see 23. Yeah, it would be plus 5 without inspiration. Crap. Okay. Um, he staggers sideways, clutching the injury. Your blade misses him. It kind of leans heavily against the table. Uh, but oh, it passes his morale check. He's uh, he's going to continue to fight the, um, <laughs> the idiot. Right, and uh, <laughs> Bellis. Bellis steps in front of the two guards and said, "Now you're mine." She shudders. <laughs> okay, like... And she goes. <laughs> <laughs> and out come tumbling all sorts of spiders, spiders, and more spiders, oh. and more spiders. Oh, and, more spiders. God. and, they, and they, they proceed to engulf the two hapless guards. Oh, Jesus. I didn't want to ask what spell that is. Mm -hmm. Her okay. version of the summons form. Yeah. Well, they're unable to move, unable to even scream, but the horror in their eyes. Is understandable to anyone as the spiders swarm over them and their two sleeping companions. There's just like a round of wild cheering and applause from the Moonlight's behind you. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> himself. Don't piss off, Bellis. <laughs> yeah. Got some Moonlight fan girl. Literally. Uh, okay. Um, Aldrich and Jadarian. Jadarian, I guess you're first. Yes. Oh, wait, no. Ah, wait. Rip you, dude. Uh, he's going to have oh. a stab at Hagen. 10, uh, 16. Hagen, your armor class is 14, so that's a hit. And then you just 6, 7, 8, 9 damage, Hagen. Puts you down to 10 points as the uh, long, slim blade right into the gut and out again. For cold steel, it burns incredibly deeply. Now, Jadarian. Mm. All right. While I'm on the floor, I use my foot on the bow, I pull the string back, load an arrow, a magical nice arrow. Nice foot shot. That uh, takes me back. <laughs> that, that, that's cot. That's a 20 Roll it eight. again. Roll it again. Oh, that's a fucking eight. So that's going to be a miss. <laughs> so it wouldn't matter. Uh, is it a miss? Don't, uh, 20, don't forget the inspiration. 20, it's still only a 21. Take uh, a second one. A second shot. That would be 11 plus the rest. So that would be a definitely hit then. Go for it. Uh, what was I definitely hit? That's a 24. Uh, and that is an 8. 5 plus 6, 11 damage. 11. Yes. 
takes him right in the middle of the chest, crack up through his rib cage into his heart. The Moonlight Commander stumps back against the table and slides down to the floor, his blood staining the map of Galhanoi in a symbolic fashion. <laughs> Aldric, uh, you've got uh, one surrendered guy. I, uh, I look down at him, I look at it well pointedly, and I uh, promptly run him through. Okay. I mean, fine by me. You do you. <laughs> Such an honorable man. You, you, yes. You don't hear any, uh, no, Aldric, Aldric is not honorable in battle. He's a brutal bastard. Oh, Aldric is. Uh, <laughs> that's what Hagen likes about him. That's what Chanta loves about me. What? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, are there any more soldiers? Victory is yours. Oh. You have, well, oh. no. There's some wild I'm cheering and what sound like muffled crying noises from the uh, the moonlight um, tent from the moonlight pen where um the uh, last guards who were there are being eaten alive by spiders well i um, do say bella sounds like she's gotten herself out of trouble um two, there two are two of them the two, two of them snoring in the commander's tent and then are the two in the grease spell who have left their weapons fall and are kind of sitting in the grease not even trying to get up anymore looking really miserable and really rather terrified. Okay. I go into the commander's tent. Yeah. And I, I try to get a bit of a, a lay of the land, apart from okay. what you just uh, described. Table, uh, sofa, simple bed, a chest, the dead bodies of the commander, two sleeping guards, and two of them sitting smeared head to toe in grease. Looking okay. like this is probably the worst day ever. All right. <laughs> well, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm about to make it a little worse. I point my runsaw at one of them. And I said, who do you work for? Collux, he says, pointing toward the dead Moonlight. And who does he work for? Uh, uh, just just s s s slave markets. He bears no allegiance to any house or... No. Oh, Torlek. No, no, we're not from Torlek. You're just slavers? Y yeah. Good pickings here. Mo Moonlights. Good money. The other one next Good to money. Mo Moonlights are lucky. <laughs> Wrong answer. I stab them. Okay. Kill them all. Kill them dead! <laughs> Can I investigate this chest? Yeah, sure. Do I roll for it or? You, well, you're you, you opening it. Yes, please. Uh, if... Okay, there's a sharp <laughs> in your finger as you uh, pull the chest open. Um, can you roll me a saving throw against poison, please? <laughs> if Jade Aaron was in that tent bar, I would have tried to parry. <laughs> so I want to roll lower than my uh, saving throw. Saving throw is high, nice and high. Okay, well, <laughs> I rolled a, th a four. <laughs> four. Uh, oh, it's okay. a pass. Shanta staggers backward. There's like a black line up your vein in your finger. Your arm goes numb. She staggers sideways and collapses into the table. Is this in the same tent? Yes. I immediately run to her and apply a tourniquet to her upper arm. Okay. <laughs> this is the best day. <laughs> this is he sucks out the poison. <laughs> that is the last... Aldrich's concerned face is the last thing you see, Shanta, as the world slips away into darkness. That's a good face. Uh, That's uh, 20 points of damage. Oh... <gasps> Well, I'm minus four. <laughs> so did the, did the slaughtering happen? Yes, it did. You were oh. outside the tent, if you recall. Okay. You come in just in time to see kind of Aldrich <coughs> pulling his ransom free of a man's uh, shattered sternum. Okay, if I'm... Am no, actually, I, no, no, he's probably actually um, cradling Shanto as she's... Dying in his arms. I, I, can I, can I, I immediately my... pick. I pick her up and I carry her to Bellis. 
Thank you. I just... The tiefling is mortally injured. The poison, however, appears to have run its course through her. It's done considerable damage to her veins, her organs, <clears throat> but doesn't appear to still be active. I put a cure light on her first, then, then a, a hold poison, and then a cure serious. Okay, well, give me the cure light first, please. That is seven plus two, right? Just, no, just seven. Seven. Okay, Shanta, you come around. Aldrich is still holding you, but uh, Bellis is by your side, murmuring soft prayers to the ghost mother. Is my finger still got that black vein kind of running through it? Your or? finger is bruised, the blackness is gone. Do the rest of us see this? Absolutely terrible, yes. Hmm. Uh, does she need the whole po uh, the whole poison still, or you examine her? You don't think so. She's okay. just suffering from a minor organ liquefaction. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Usual. You know, I've, I've, I'm still suffering from mummy rot. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love how we completely forgot about that. I, I healed I mine. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, like, do I, I must feel horrible, right? Yeah, you feel but terrible. I give her uh, another healing uh, on top of that. Uh, cure serious. Okay. <clears throat> What's mummy rot? Tis That's... you don't want to know. Oh. I keep forgetting this. Is it one ten? You just start to unroll like toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> Is the girl going to be all right? Coughs up yeah. blood. <laughs> uh, that's really? Eight. Eight. Yes. T today, Can yes, you? she'll be fine. You're on, you're on yeah, like, future, I'm, who I'm knows? Like, I'm on 15 now, I think. No, 11. What's seven plus eight? Yeah, no, you were minus four, remember? So you went up to three, <laughs> now you're on 11. Oh, does it actually count the minuses? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not just for show. So I'll oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just default to zero. You know? yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, Shanti, I'll do a cure light on myself. Oh. Okay, you're, you're feeling better. The ache in your organs is starting to uh, to recede. I look at uh, whether anybody else needs healing. Mm. Oh, I need healing. Okay, right. Bellis, Bellis, you're on twelve. Shanta is currently on eleven. But I, uh, I rolled a four, so six. I'm on ten. Everybody in the huddle, please, and then I'll give them. Uh, oh, the thing. The thing is coming. The thing. The thing? Yeah. I, I wasn't hit at all, was I? No. You want the thing anyway? The Stand thing? The yeah, the thing. The thing. Uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm okay. Get you, 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 you do the thing. I'll be over here. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Sorry, I assume I'll I. I'll guard you. I'll, I'll. I'll watch over you guys while you're doing the thing. I, I'm back to full HP. And that sure. other thing. Six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Move it. I'm back to full HP, but I'm gonna lay there and be like. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Uh, and another 19 uh, uh, hit points for everybody. 19! Oh, back to full. Back to, oh, bloody hell. Back to my total of 25. Wow. That thing was great. Mm -hmm. Good thing. Ni 19 for who? For everybody. 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 Oh, at 19. Excellent. You get 19. So you're, Hagen, you're on 29, and everyone else is fully healed. Everybody gets Bellis. Bellis is a pulse of Oprah. healing energy comes out of uh, Bellis as the, uh, she channels the purest energy of the ghost mother into the material realm. Nice. Uh, your power as a healer has progressed quite a bit. Mm, thank you. She's a, she's a witch. To our she's a witch. She made spiders come out of her mouth and they eat those guys. Look. <clears throat> Hagen uh, asked if she was going to be okay. And I say yes today. In the future, Thanks. who knows? Thanks for the rescue, <laughs> guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate, I hate slugs. Yes. Chanda, how did this happen? I touched something. <laughs> you should ask me to check it first. You touched the last time pinky. you did that, you summoned like a thing. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he has a little bit more experience. It was the, like the, the chest. I, I touched it and it pricked me. And I, <laughs> I can't walk. I'm going to investigate the chest. Is Are there any doses of that poison left, by the way? <laughs> Save that for later. Uh, there is one left. 
By the way, is, is there that swarm of could... spiders still there? Sorry, say that again, please, uh, Hagen. Sorry. Oh, uh, is there any way that I could harvest that for myself? You need to disarm it, but yes. All right, I'm going to try and disarm it then. Uh, okay. Um, the swarm of catch. spiders has, is this, this, uh, dissipating as we speak because that dissipates as soon as I uh, stop uh, fo focusing on it. Okay. Yeah, uh, you're fairly certain that you have, in fact, disarmed the trap. All right. I will take the poison and then I will uh, pop open the chest and see what was inside it. Okay. Um, just so you know, if, if it matters, it's uh, injury type G, but it's uh, immediate onset and it does 20 damage. Um, the chest contains an assortment of coins. You see Imperial Torlek coins, Teraterin, um, Thanegioth, some from the northern continents of Aletheia. I mean, it's just a huge mishmash of coinage from a bunch of different places. Uh, your practiced estimate, uh, Hagen, is that you're looking at about six and a half thousand gold pieces worth of money. Oh, yeah. Mm. Cha-ching. Yeah, indeed. Tadarian dives into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go and style. grab the moon white. <laughs> I'll pick up the moon white's body and the, uh, the thing, bring it in and slam it on the table. Chuck Bellis the uh, the wand. Say, I don't know if you've noticed, but it does lightning damage. Um, yes, <laughs> I did notice. <laughs> yes, and it hurt quite a bit. I think, I think effective when you're in the swimming pool, you know. I'm gonna check this guy. He's hard to hit. Why is he so hard to hit? My arrows just bounce straight off him. There could be a number of things. You have the stone skin spell. You have the protection from normal missile spell. There's plenty of spells. Mm. Mm. Magical weapons had no problem. Will be then the protection from normal missile spell. I'll it's check a, his body anyway. It's, it's a, a master spell or a journeyman spell? I'm not sure. <clears throat> uh, it's a high journeyman. High journeyman. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you have a, a good check on him. The, the silk clothes would have been worth a, a couple of hundred before you stab them full of holes. Um, he's got a ring, um, silver, that's inset with a sapphire. Uh, you think it's worth a thousand gold pieces. Um, the rapier I'll, itself is... Uh, I'll cast detect magic on, on the stuff to see whether anything is... Just uh, the wand. Okay. Um, spell component pouches, you think probably he was running a shield spell combined with the protection of normal missiles combined with either high dexterity or a cat's grace, one or the other. But, yeah. What were you saying about his rapier? Uh, the rapier itself is a, a masterwork rapier. Um, you say he had a spell book? No, spell component pouches. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, yeah, no, Shanta wasn't there to see him. But um, from what from what little you saw of him, they didn't see anything that looked a bit, looked like a wizard. It's entirely possible he was a sorcerer, so they won't even be a spell book. What size does a rapier count as? Uh, counts as medium weapon. You'll be able to use it. Yeah, He's getting full size damage off it. Oh, wait, did you, oh I, know, I see what you mean. No, it, it counts as a uh, uh, as a small weapon for uh, for purposes as of uh, a finesse fighting. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Then, if no one minds, I would... Go for it, it man. Like to... All right, excellent. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Although it'll, so be, the... it'll be interesting to, to, to have uh, Mark to go from Rutzer to Rapier and Rutzer and Rapier. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> big pointy, little pointy. That's just yes. Pointy, pointy. Um, uh, it's built for, uh, for penetration, so it's plus one to damage, not plus one to hit. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Yeah. Let's check the rest of the site, and then we head back. Okay. Um. The rest of the site. Seventeen tents for uh, the various slaver crew. It looks as if they just moved into this area. They said the uh, the northern areas had been picked clean. So. Uh, that fresh in the in the neighborhood. However, from the uh, various slavers and their tents and their personal accoutrements, we gathered together about another 600 gold pieces worth of earrings and small rings and trinkets and personal coinage. Someone writing all this down, I take it. Someone better be. 
Yeah, yeah pa- good. Panda is, yeah. I got it. Good job. Uh-huh. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Janta. <laughs> Just like there with a, with a pen and paper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the Discord. <laughs> Cut nice. the money. Just head back then. Yes. Okay. Yes. A moon white, almost certainly not local to this area. Or if he once was, his clothing shows that it would been some time since he was here. But uh, we take that body with us. And Thandrassa might know him. Certainly his name. Yes. A moon white selling out his own people. Yes. I'm I'm, I'm not supposed to do this, but I am am very tempted not to give him a nice journey uh, to where he belongs. Okay. And uh, back to Flamebow, you head. On your way, The ground, once more, shakes. And it comes again, yes, out of the west, but out of the ground. From the trees, from the stones, from the air, from the sunlight. A voice shrieking and shrieking. A woman's voice. An elven woman's voice. And it's not just wordless cries of pain. There is a name in there. Jade Nothing to see here, guys. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. Oh, man. Back at Flamebow, your guide awaits to the cursed city and the tear of Coralong. We will see you next episode how that transpires. Bastard. I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> we must no, continue. We will go me. to 6 a.m. God damn it. No technical Even issues. If it kills me. Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, thank no. you guys for playing. Uh, thank you, of viewers, course. for uh, watching um, us pummel each other (laughs) for a couple of hours that's always good um we're down to our last couple of episodes next episode is the penultimate and after that we have the season finale let's uh cross our fingers for our brave heroes um if you're on their team players and a route for their untimely and humiliating demises Uh. if you're on if you're on team dm (laughs) <laughs> uh, what, was the, uh, what was the poll thing for today uh the poll thing will be revealed when we get back to the elves uh, yeah. oh no Purses. i was sure it was the slavers <laughs> uh, it's actually something nice I thought oh, it was going to oh, be a poison, okay. like the organ melting one. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's the that, that's all me. <laughs> <laughs> that's Team DM. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh my god, oh, that was right. a really good one. Yeah. Well, it, thank it you very much. Uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. So we are at Pantheon tomorrow and Hemlora Saturday. Um, yeah. Yes. See you again. Soon. Be sure to tune in. Give them all your support. Yes. Yes. Cheers, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.